Hello there. <laughs> Welcome to the Hobby Collab. I'm Brett, and I'm joined today by Zach. Hello. We're building a uh, crude from the new Tau Codex. We got our box, uh, and we have some unassembled sprues here. Uh, I'm going to be building carnivores. Uh, Zach, you are being tasked with building the new Rampager kit. Yes. These are the juvenile Krutox who are more aggressive than their uh, el elderly brethren. Okay, so I, I was asking you if they're smaller, and they're the same base size, but they do actually look a little less bulky. They're physically, yeah, pretty similar in size. They're just, okay. like, younger. They're, like, they're hyped up on, on crude hormones. Oh, okay. They're, they're, they're... They're running. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we're going to be doing some assembly today. Um, I was reading the book before the stream because in order to assemble things, you have to know what weapons are good, and so we're looking through the different weapon options yeah. for uh, for both the um, there's some some aesthetic options, different melee options for the rampagers, uh, but also um, different secondary like special weapon yeah. options for the carnivores. Yeah. Um, so we're, we were cho choosing those and, uh, I think we've got a pretty good, I think we've got a pretty good selection. Um, if you have questions for us about the book or about the crew in general, feel yeah. free to, to let us know in chat. Um, and yeah, we're gonna, we're, we've got a poll, we've got a segment, we've got we some do. fun things to chat today. We've got a lot of fun crew things lined up. Um, um, I have to say, I'm pretty excited, honestly. I know this sounds like lip service, but... Not playing a lot of 40k right now. Mm. Um, dedicated our life to dedicating our life currently to Age of Sigmar. Yeah, um, of course. But um, even you bringing these over was yet another stage of me lamenting that I'm not doing a lot of 40k right now. I was like, "Hey Zach, you want to look at the book? Here's the here's the fun pages." Yeah, hey, Zach, you want to look at the models? I know. And I was like, "Oh, I'm not going to understand this book." And I immediately <laughs> understood everything. I was like, "Oh gosh, I really wish I was playing Crude." Um, pretty much like the whole time I've been playing 40k, I started with Tau back in 2008 yeah. um, when I started playing 40k, and I was like, I really like the crew. I really love the Tau. I, I don't dislike the Tau. Yeah. But I love the Tau, but I also, I mean, like, crew are kind of my favorite part. Um, and I was like, I've always wanted a legitimate all crude army. Yeah. And now it seems like you, a thing you can, you can actually do, do that. Yeah. And actually, I, I don't really want an all crude army. I want like some, I want like a couple crisis suits, stealth suits. Yeah. I wanted like, I feel like I, I want like no fight. Oh, all the infantry is crude. Yeah, That's like yeah, kind of what yeah. I sure, always sure. wanted. Yeah, and that is not only doable in this this new codex, but genuinely compelling. I know, like I know. like actually pretty good. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna be building everyone's favorite um, uh, noble savages. Yeah, today. everyone's favorite noble savages, um, <clears throat> and I think. Yeah, I, I, I honestly do think that I'm going to have to find some time after, uh, hopefully after fourth ed drops or maybe yeah. before, um, to get my crew together. I think what I'm going to do is wait for, um, I have my crew painting down pretty quick. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think we're going to wait for these guys to come out as a box and all the new heroes to come out as a box. Sure. Which should be, what, a couple months? Maybe yeah, a month? Maybe. I think the, the book, standalone book is, is scheduled to come out. Uh, thank you, Christopher, for the super chat. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, I think this the standalone book is scheduled to come out towards the end of this month, early May. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm a, I would imagine that the the standalone kits come out sometime pretty shortly after that. I feel like I need to get what, what do I need to get, Brad? I, I have 24 hounds. Yeah, I'm kind of okay with the hounds. Yeah, the hounds. I actually don't like the new hounds. So the, I'm the, the very, more bulldog. I'm mm -hmm. very happy that the new hounds don't come in the box. Okay. Uh, because I yeah I'm not I'm not super I'm not super into it. Uh, but yeah the the Krutox are great the rampagers are great the new carnivore kit obviously great. Um, although you have uh, quite a lot. So here's what I'm here's what right? I'm the crew owner of. Yeah. Pr fully okay. painted. All right. But I'm gonna have to rebase things. Yes. Which I'm actually okay with. Yeah, agreed. Um, Me too. I'm going. I, I have sixty crude. Yeah. Oh wow. I have uh, carnivores. I have twenty four hounds. Mm -hmm. I have uh, six. Twenty four hounds. So that's three units of, of eight. You could potentially run. Yeah. Are they They're in you? units of five now. Classic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. So I need um six hounds, I guess. Right. Um, to get to thirty. Yeah. But it kind of sounds like. They're not great, and maybe 20 is enough. Right, yeah. Which is fine. I'm fine with that. Um, so I have, and then I have six crew toxes, and I have yep. three shapers, and I have 
Garak, who I usually just use as another shaper. Right. I'm assuming he doesn't have his own rules. He anymore. doesn't. In in fact, yeah, he got legends. Legends did. Um, however, there are now three kinds of shapers. Mm-hmm. Uh, does he so make sense visually for one? He kind of does. Yeah, I I the sniper think guy. so. There's um. So there's a war shaper, which is probably maybe what you're thinking. Um, is that but the guy I, you're showing me right here? Yeah. So this is I've I've pre-built the characters. I've got the war shaper done and the flesh shaper. So I don't I definitely don't think he makes sense as the flesh shaper, but I think you could use Grek as either the war shaper or the trail shaper. And I actually think he'd probably make more sense as the trail shaper. The trail shaper is the one that's like. Basically, the Pathfinder version of the Crute Shaper. He's like sneaky and infiltrates and stuff. And Grek's got that like cool cloak. Yeah, right. Also, the War Shaper has like some cool either ranged or melee weapons that are not standard, not just a standard Crute rifle, uh, which which you know you you'd struggle to kind of represent on on Grek's model. Right. He um, he, he's pretty standard. But but the Trail Shaper just has a Crute rifle. So, so I think my my take is that the the Grek model would would be a best a, the best fit for a trail shaper. Got it. Yeah. Um, Which, to be fair, um, I think is probably the best of the three. Oh, cool. Like they're all good, and you kind of want them all for for different things. Do you want more than one of any? Yeah. Good, because I I definitely will get the new trail shaper. I think model. The, I think looks the, super cool. I think the trail shaper. He's the one. The trail shaper model is the one with. The, he's not included in this box, but he's the one with the like sort of cracked. Like breach, uh, breach load, crew rifle. They previewed it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, he looks super cool. Yeah. So that's fun. I'm excited for that because um, I would like to be able to run a largely crew army. Yeah. And um, I, you know, I have a lot of stuff now. I might pick up a new box of carnivores just to get some special weapons. Yeah. Um, we were. I was just looking at this before the show, and um. Yeah, again, to try to figure out, like, what do... Because, yeah, you, you build these models, and it's sort of... You know, you can magnetize a crisis suit. You can magnetize a vehicle weapon. Magnetizing infantry. But, like, magnetizing an infantry, that's... Ooh, man, that's a that's a chore. So, I, and I'm certainly not going to do that. So, I was thinking about, like, what, what, are, what are the rules for this? And it looks like the Tangle Bomb Launcher is a 1 per 10 upgrade for mm-hmm. carnivores. And it's kind of just a, a straight upgrade to the to the crew rifle. Uh, because the crew rifle no longer confers any benefit in melee. It used to be a melee weapon and uh, and gave you some benefit in melee, but but it no longer does. Right. So um, so the Tangle Bomb Launcher is just strength five and has more attacks and is blast and you know, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I think the Tangle Bomb Launcher is probably probably a good choice, and we'll be building a Tangle Bomb Launcher today. Um, but beyond that, like the carbine, so there's different, there's different. Uh, <clears throat> I'm looking here at there's three different options for building a long quill. There's here. There's this uh, pink guy, and this is the carbine. Long the, quill, he says, like the sergeant. He's like the sergeant. Yeah, he's got a double-barreled gun. That's the carbine. Uh, here's another pose for the long quill. Also got a double barreled gun. It's kind of hard to see here. But these two are essentially two different versions of the same pose with the carbine. And this is the only option for building the long quill uh, with just a normal crew rifle. And I don't I don't know that I love the carbine, so I'm going to build build this guy. Uh, but he's the only pose option. I kind of like this like pointing uh, knife thing. So mm-hmm. I might see if I can... <clears throat> so you put that on another con- guy, right? Convert this arm onto this body. Kind that of thing. should be doable. Yeah, it should be doable. I think they usually. I feel like they show that stuff, and then you start building, and you're like, "Oh, this has nothing to do with that." Like they show you. It's kind of interesting, and I get why they do it. It's for younger people, and for just like here's an option. But yeah. you start to realize like, oh, the left arm and the right arm are totally unrelated, and I can use the left arm for one and like the right arm for another. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. the right arm is holding a special weapon, and now the left arm is different for some reason. Yeah, for some, GW is doing more of this thing where they they like sort of lock you into a certain combination of parts. Um, I don't know that I love it, but that's where we're at. It's for sure, I believe, uh, 
Thank you, Christopher, and welcome, Philip. Yeah, we, we owe some thanks out here. I, I, um, <clears throat> it's for sure, I believe, to make the lives of recasters miserable. Oh my gosh, I never thought about that before. I'm sure it has. I'm sure it has something to do with that. Um, Interesting, <clears throat> uh, especially recasters who want to sell individual parts. Right. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Let's let's toss out a few big thanks to some people. Um, looks like there's trying to there's some sniping going on. Attempts mm. at some sniping. It's yeah. a sniping kind of a day. So yes, thank you, Christopher, for the sticker or just the 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 two dollar thingy. We appreciate that. This is always nice. Thanks, soups, as always. Uh, hardly an episode goes by that he doesn't give us a little Thanks, support, soups. and we always appreciate it. Good Same with Liberty chat. Furs. Uh, Liberty Furs? Liberty Furs. Thank you. We appreciate it. And then, of course, uh, cr- uh, Chris again, gifting a membership. Thanks, Chris. Chris, looks like you got Filippo. Is that the Filippo? I think it is the Filippo. Wow, nice. Yeah. Um, that was, that's a, that's a quality snipe right there. That's a good snipe. All right, so I'm looking for this. Chat, can you help me find this? Let me know if you see this. I'm looking for the pointing out hand with the with the knife on it. Do you it. really want it's C15? chat to help you find There it the is. Thing. There okay. it is. It's right there. <laughs> I found it. This is like, where where's Waldo? I was kind of like, can you imagine asking chat to help you find a thing? And then, like, Polly's in chat? <laughs> He'd be like, dude, it's right there, bro. <laughs> He'd be like, oh, I think it's on the last, the, on the next page. No, Quad- the next page. Quadrant 13, yeah, W13. Don't you see it? Godforge, welcome to Lab Rat. Okay, so this... Nice to see you. Is, gonna, is this going to... It kind of does. It kind of works. kind of just works. Brett, we wanted to make you um, spend some time... We know oh that my a lot gosh. of people... No, it, actually, it very much works. Wait a second. Of course. No, I'm telling you. I've been noticing this with Sigmar models. There's like... It's not supposed to work. No. C1 and C2... It, it, I'm telling you. This yeah. is like... This is really like... Okay. Someone jump in and tell me if they get what I'm saying here. GW has... Okay, hold on. Let's show this again. Yeah. Okay, sh- sh- show that. Okay. So I want to do... I want to do this. I want to do this guy. And it says, like, the body is meant to be C14 yeah, and C13. Bit, oh, yeah. yeah okay. Sorry, there we go. No, it's okay. So the body's meant to be C14 and C13 mm-hmm. to work with this C15 arm. Right. But I want to use that arm, the C15 arm, mm-hmm. with... With this body, that's C1 and C2. And you're building because you want to build the... Because I want to build this guy. guy. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I've been noticing this. Um, and it just goes on. It yeah. just, the arm just fits on. The big the big place I noticed this was... Um, I was not expecting that. It was Cities of Sigmar. It was... Um, uh, it, well, it was the Free Guild kit. The only thing that's a little bit weird about the Free Guild kit... Free Guild, um, everything's Free Guild. Free Guild Steel Homes is you had to kind of keep an eye if you thought they were implying a male or a female body or kind of like the, the, the size of the torso. Yeah. Because they have male and female and then they have some like big dudes. Um, so you, so you had to kind of like match arm size with torso size, but that was it. Yeah. Otherwise, they would show you exactly what to build. They'd be like, here's what you build. But if you like, looked over and saw another arm that you wanted to, like, because I made 40 of these guys, yeah. right? You would be like, okay, um, I'm going to use this arm on this body because I already did the one they told me to do. Right. And then I'm going to use this different arm. You could actually get away with it, like, all the time. And I think it's by design, but it, they don't seem to, like, advertise it anymore. Yeah, they're not. I, I, was, I was terrified that I was going to have to do a bunch of fitting to make this work. Yeah. I, um, and... Uh, right. So yeah, all right. He just works. And so wait, what did God Godforge just said here was interesting. He said, "In order to cast the bits, you lose the numbers, so it makes it a nightmare to recast." Oh, I see. Wait, you, why do you? Oh, they don't just cast the whole sprue. And if they why? So if they did just cast the whole sprue, um, what would be the what's the well? Then they have to cast the whole sprue. They no longer. Well, at the very least, they no longer have a um, marketing advantage of selling people just what they need. That's true. If you cast the whole sprue, you end up with a bunch of bits that you're now on eBay. Cares you're about. now an eBayer. Right. You now have just turned yourself into an eBayer who right. casts an entire sprue <clears throat> and has to now figure out what you're doing with all the guns nobody wants. This is how you you guys know that I've never recast anything because I I don't know how to how it works. Yeah. <clears throat> Fascinating. Okay. No, I've. 
or like how how like the body is often now split up the torso might be split into like two parts weird and it stuff is like that. yeah but they're doing a better job of at least making them sort of near each other on the sprue which is, yes which is which is cool um but yes i've been noticing the single post i think the single post has another probably another well see i don't I don't really think that like you've talked we've talked about like are people at GW events walking around seeing your recast and kicking no, you out? No. And the answer is no, but I think the single sprue um the single Absolutely post not. thing is going to make it obvious if it's a recast or not as well. <laughs> I'm I'm guessing or I don't know. I don't know either. But my my yeah. my my thinking is that there is some there's some recasting reason that we've seen the models change this way. Um, but I don't exactly understand it. It's just kind of a hunch. C5. Okay. Head. Got a head here. Certainly bits are often a lot less interesting now. Like a bit is now half an arm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. You can't just like tack a weapon on because half the weapon is on one bit and the other half of the weapon is on the other bit. Right, right. It's like a lot of the people were complaining about the feet on the on the rampagers and the crew talks. Yeah, like, I just put toes on. <laughs> yeah, half yeah. the foot is like on the tactical rock, and the other half is is on the on the leg. Yeah, so that's super common. Um, but also like super annoying for people who want to remove the tactical rock. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. Like I I I removed the tactical rock on this guy. Uh, this was our. This is we painted this guy. This uh, this is the games day. This is the this the, is the uh, event exclusive model. Event yeah, exclusive. I removed the tactical rock, but I had to like clip the t his toes were were molded into it, so I had to clip off, clip it off. <clears throat> mm, All right. Yeah, I is is this a good segue into mentioning that this Sunday, Sunday, uh, Sunday, Sunday, on the hobby stream, Megan and Devin. Are, are, hey, Megan and Devin, yeah. are doing a a, um, a tactical rock video, a tactical rock stream, stream, yeah. yeah. So is that is that did I do that? Good, yeah. Did I do that right? Hey, speaking of segues, um, I said I wanted you to spend some time. Um, in particular, I like to get this in early. A lot of times when we have a live stream, it's it's people that have seen this already before, but we have rewatching people, rewatchers. Um, rewatchers. That's actually, this promo is important. Um, while it's up here, just a reminder: if you're a Mandro, these are up. These are upcoming. I feel like we might have the date for one of them. Maybe I'm wrong on that, or at least we're narrowing in on the date for I think the first one. Um, Mandrills, uh, this well, this is a good reason to be a Mandro, by the way. This is a super cool perk. Um, yeah. Speaking of Devin, um, this is not the button I want to press right now. But um, <laughs> while I'm here, I'll just talk about it real quick. Um, the button I want to press. No, right no, no, no. Let's talk about it here. Well. Okay. Th no, th this is this is good. This is important. Mandrills, yes, please. Um, remember, you have this perk. If you're not a mandrill, you're a lab so, rat. So what is the perk? The perk yeah, is... So that Good, good, good call. The perk is um, Devin, uh, a brush adept from Instagram, <clears throat> will be um, giving some... Ha he's done a couple already, and he's about to do a few more, um, which is a, basically a class, an online class in our Discord server for mandrills. Um, he's a super high-level painter, award-winning painter, um, and we want to basically be able to have these classes um, that are more, somewhat more than like a YouTube video, where you can actually literally like talk and ask questions in this thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we do have times for these. They're in the Discord. Um, so we we actually do have a little bit more information on when these are. I don't happen to know those off the top of my head though. Um, but they are, they are, they are happening. Super cool. Devin's an awesome teacher as well as a great painter. Um, and getting Which is like a thing, right? Getting, uh, you know, an hour with, uh, with, a, 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 someone of his caliber where you can, can have feedback, real time feedback, ask questions in real time is, uh, is super great. It's cool. You, you know, like this is not a dig on any person that you're going to go get a classroom at a, at a at an event because Devin does that too. But you know, you go to a class with Vince Venturella. It's awesome. He's an incredible person. He's a good teacher. I've also heard, right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you have his class, you ask him a question. Um, he answers it. You, the likelihood that you'll have like a good line to him moving on afterwards is kind of low. Um, but Devin's been super cool about this, at least for now, while there's not millions of you guys, um, where, you know, you ask him a question, send him a message in discord the next day, show him your, or post your um, progress, and he 
we see him dip in. We're going to do a critique later today where he's also dipped in um, and gave some thoughts. Yeah. So um, super helpful guy. <clears throat> also very excited in the near future um, from our community. A lot of you have met and even hung, how we hung out with Timbit. Um, Timbit also has an Instagram presence. Is uh, had a mention right on a, uh, yeah. the got the mention award thing. At Golden, at, Demon. At Golden Demon. Golden Demon. A lot of you guys have seen Salon. So we're going to have Timbit doing a, a, a couple classes for us also in the near future for Mandrills. Um, here's what I wanted to talk about, though. I did want to talk about that. But, yeah, Brett, uh, Mouser Mixer, if you are here. Um, yeah, we, if you're if you're in the Bay Area, I highly recommend you check this out. This is a local narrative event put on by our, our local narrative club. Uh, the weekend of Cinco de Mayo um we should actually let's circle back to why that makes it extra awesome when you're when you're done yeah um i think you know why we're we're doing um it's a it's a cool take on a different a slightly different format uh it's a it's a cool bunch of people who are coming out for the right reasons to to play games and have fun uh there's some awesome storytelling elements the the event team has put together a really compelling narrative for each of four different unique bespoke war zones uh, featuring sort of prolonged conflicts between uh, a couple different super factions. Uh, so it um, it's a really fun, uh, different narrative experience uh, and that we think you'd, you'd be really into if, uh, if you're in the area. Um, I'll be there. I'm, I'm one of the event runners. Uh, Zach and Meg are going to be there live streaming. So here on the Hobby Collab, you'll get uh, live streamed games from uh, the head table. Yeah, people are going to tune in Saturday for AOS and they're going to be like, what is <laughs> what happening? What is this? <laughs> um, uh, so you'll get to see kind of what the gameplay experience is like. Uh, and and yeah, it's going to be it's going to be an awesome weekend. So check it out. Yeah. Now um, the single. So it's a cool venue. Yeah. Um, and we've chatted actually a lot about the venue itself um, for people who are coming, for, well, for anybody, right? If you, even if, like, this is something for sure we're, Brett's planning on doing again, at least I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> and um, we've chatted a lot about the venue, Guild Hall, Guild House. Guild House. Sorry, I always do that, um, which is like a gaming bar. They do a lot of esports there. Um, it's a cool place. The owner, um, is, uh, one of the owners anyway that I know, Kevin, super cool guy. Yeah. Um, I, I think I know the other, or met the other guy. Dave and Matt. There's three of them. Um, yeah. I, I feel like I've met Dave maybe. Yeah. Dave um, is, Dave is the more chatty outgoing of the three. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, cool venue. Um, but what else makes this cool is that Cinco de Mayo, um, San Jose is a great, town for Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. Um, Cinco de Mayo, Mexican-American holiday, San Jose, big Mexican-American population, lots of amazing Mexican food, Mexican uh, uh, restaurants. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, our street food is like a lot of Mexican food. We have the, what are they called, danger dogs. Oh my um, gosh, that we yeah. Found out about. I didn't know that that was a thing. Yeah, um, so... Um, it's a cool place to be for Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. Dare I say, um, outside of SoCal, um, it's kind of like a, it'd kind of be like spending St. Patrick's Day in, uh, in, yeah, in Boston, in Boston yeah. right? So, um, I, I, and, and frankly, I mean, honestly, as far as the North Bay goes, the top destination for, for, for sure. So, um, and why that matters to you, you're like, okay, well, I don't care. I'm not going to have time to do that stuff. You will, because... Isn't there basically? Don't they basically shut the street down right outside? Yes. And it's like it's like a yeah. It's a yeah. they 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 close the street down and it's um it's very um, parking is will be challenging but um yeah we'll we'll figure it out <laughs> yeah but we're gonna you're, you'll get there early enough to park in the morning and then you'll be fine yeah 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 you're you're gonna get there yeah early it's walking the festivities they, they shut the street down it's walking traffic foot traffic only which is cool. Nice. And, and the the um the, the front of Guild House is like open, right? So it's like open air kind of like it's like for a lot of you guys cool because vibe. because I know a lot of you guys come from places with horrible weather. <laughs> for a lot of you guys, it's going to be like 
one of the coolest play like outside of like the cruise they do in Gibraltar and stuff yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. like no retreat Gibraltar. For a lot of you guys, it's gonna be the coolest venue. Like yeah, you've that's true. In. That's yeah, true. It's, it's definitely cool not like a typical tournament venue. No, yeah. it's a cool place. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's gonna be a lot of war gamers there. I, I've come to kind of take it in for for granted, no, but it's, it's actually cool pretty place. pretty sweet. It's a great place. Venue, yeah. Um, well, on a typical Thursday, it's not as cool, but like with with um, but although it's getting cool because now there's those guys across the street that sell tacos. Yeah, um, I wonder if those street, guys will be there. Street vendors. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's it's a great little place to play to spend a weekend. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you guys will you guys will be ha- you guys will be like a lot of people will be like, wow, this is like just a cool place. Yeah. Um, what's the, f- there's a Portuguese restaurant, like, right across the street, you, me, Megan, and Leah went to one time, that we was pretty interesting. Did, yeah, you hated it, because it had, quote-unquote, tapas. Yeah, but it's, the food was actually pretty decent. The what, food is good, yeah. What else is, like, right around there? Um, there's a, f- like, a food hall, which I think it will, a lot of people will end up at. Oh, for, yeah. For lunch. Very convenient, um, awesome. Sort of like a, with a bunch of little stalls, which is there's great. There's the coffee place right around the corner. Yep. Yep. You know what there is? Oh, There's a climbing gym. You know what we need to potentially or I don't know what's being organized for Friday night Not and or Saturday yeah. night. Okay. We need to consider the Orchestral Palms res- restaurant. Now you and I I've talked about this with you okay. and Leah. I don't Oh, what about wait, there's that there's also that like hipster bar underground. Is that what you're talking about? Haberdash is the second one. Yeah. So, um first, I would say um everybody look up um, everybody look up, um, what's it called? Uh, Orchestral Palms Restaurant. Okay. Um. I've, I've certainly not been to this place. Yeah, so it's, uh, super weird and old-timey. Um, just gotta look it up. Orchestral Palms Restaurant in San Jose. They're only open on Friday and Saturday nights for, like, eight hours. Oh, right, I remember you talking yeah, about Yeah, yeah, and it's just, it's just a wild place. And yeah. you can't stay there that late if you wanted to. Mm. Um. I think you could go get dinner, I don't know, maybe Friday night or, yeah. or Saturday. Um, and then, yeah, there's Haberdasher, which is um, a hipster bar, but it's it's you literally go underground and it's a speakeasy. A speakeasy, yeah. that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. Um, And it's pretty cool. All right. Um, <clears throat> can you switch back to uh, um, Zoom, yes. Zoomed in cam? So I have a decision to make here. I did not. I, I've got the little. This um. This kit comes with uh, a little doggo. So if you see here, there's a puppy that you're meant to put on the on the sergeant's base, like a croup hound puppy. Um, and I don't know what to do with this. Like I don't. It's kind of weird to me that to have like two models on a base, on one base. I've heard some people talk like you only get one per sprue. But I have two sprues here, so in theory I have two of these. Um, but I kind of don't know what to do with them. So I don't know. Do like chat? Do you guys have any ideas for, or have you had any thoughts about like what you're gonna do with your little crude hound puppies? Um, I I don't know that I love the idea of putting them on on the sh- the. It's not the shapers base. Maybe I could put them on the shapers base uh, rather than the sergeant's base. That feels more right to you. Yeah, especially like the trail shaper, maybe. Oh yeah, so if, so if I do a conversion or something, I don't know. I'm I'm curious. What are you guys? I, I feel like this is an, a very important, in 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 you know capital letters, capital V, capital I, very important decision. What do you do with your little, crute hound puppy? Um, I like I have not made up a decision yet. What to do with all the gargoyleans? Yeah, from Cities of Sigmar. Um. Literally nothing that we've built has a gargoyleon on it yet. I have probably two dozen of them. Okay. Um, and I haven't done anything with any of them yet. And, 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 I, and I'm unfamiliar with the gargoyleon. This is like essentially the the city's equivalent of what I'm doing right now. Yeah, you saw they they were making a big deal. They're these I know cute they look little like, yeah. Middle Ages things, but yeah. they have no rules whatsoever. So it's just like a fun, it's just fun. little animal creature. It's that purely a fun little animal creature. <clears throat> yeah. Saray. Now, if you're Meg, you probably just kill this dog right you probably just stab it immediately with your knife <laughs> just like Arr! i'm not gonna do that though but yeah i mean like it fits 50s, on his base like 50s that. dog catcher oh my god yeah i um you could yeah. do that no, that looks pretty good honestly i kind of like it 
Look, Umi said the same thing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not terrible. Not terrible. I don't know that I'm into the... Like, it's just... It's, like, a little cluttered, though, right? I don't know that I'm into it. Okay. Uh, I'm not... I'm gonna delay this decision. I'm moving on. I built my shaper. Um, he's a hodgepodge. You know what I'm realizing now? Is I actually could have just put the different gun on... Um... I really like the way... Sorry, mm. I'm going to interrupt you for a second. Yeah, no, I fine. really like the way that this this dude is hanging on to... Um, this carnivore is hanging on to this crutox. Yeah, okay. On the rampager. I mean, he's it's like just, just barely hanging on. He right? is... There is no saddle. <laughs> yeah. He just... No, he's got little foot pegs. Here. Oh, he does. I built he does, one. He does, he does. He's him. got little foot pegs. His little foot pegs. So, but they're pretty... Yeah. He's got little foot There's pegs. foot pegs. He's like, okay. you can see him sort of right, right here. He's like, uh... I'm sure he's good at hanging on. I'm, and he's, you know. his toes are like prehensile feet. He's like gripping on the foot pegs with his toes. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Um, we do have a poll up. We mentioned this. Uh, make sure you vote. Looks like we picked the right uh, alien here to work on today because... Everyone likes the crew? Currently, crew are doing well in this poll. Um, Brett. Yeah. We like to do little segments here. And yeah. we thought um, we would Show do off. one of our traditional ranking systems, speaking of the crew. Um, what we want to do is we want to talk about the Tao Empire. And we want to talk about the different um, sub-factions in the Tao Empire. Sorry, not sub-factions. Wrong word. Different alien client races, the different alien auxiliary <laughs> races, right? Um, in in the Tau Empire, client <clears throat> races. That's a that's a good that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, and we wanted to uh, then S tier to D tier rank them. Rank them, okay, yeah. Okay, you know what this guy is? Uh, this is this is a he's the polar bear guy. He's a Nikasar, right? Nikasar, Nis Nisikar? Yeah, I don't Nikasar? know. Nikasar, I, I, I I preemptively. Most of the artwork I'm, I've used here is um, is GW official artwork. I don't know what this one is. I don't think it looks like it to me. Um, so if we have to clip out this part, we <clears throat> I'm will. not sure. There's a couple Tau fans in chat. I wonder if there has been official GW artwork of an um, actual Nikasar. I think it, there might have just been, uh, you know, descriptions of them. Which they're described as a giant floating polar bear. Yeah, they're space polar bears. Yeah. Psychic space polar bears. Bad at combat, apparently. Bad at combat. Very uh, very good at psychic. Very good at psychic. And um, also, they do a lot of the... Um, they, they, they help the Tau out with space travel. But they themselves... Um, I, so I did a little re research on all these, fac on all these races um, before the stream. They themselves, kind of interesting, they have what is described as an in satiable uh, uh, desire to explore the galaxy. Yeah. They live their lives uh, in these exploration vessels just kind of floating through the galaxy. They don't, they don't like, go fast. They're just, like, they sort of hibernate as bears do. And they, they just, like, set their ship on a course and then, like, go to sleep for a long, really long time. Yep. And then they wake up and they're like, "Oh, cool! I'm in a new place." And they look around for a little while and they're like, "All right, now we're gonna we're gonna go back to sleep." Yeah, this is their lives. This is what they do. They explore. Yeah. And um, they, they link their spaceships together into caravans. Yeah. Uh, they float float through the galaxy together, and they uh, and then periodically wake up, look around, and go back to sleep. Yep. Okay, so there they are. <clears throat> Think about them. Here we go. Moving on. Yeah, chicken confirms no official art. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is early artwork of a Demirg. Oh my gosh. Um, which we now know has been retconned to be a Votan. A Votan. Um, and they did a little bit of interesting retconning on this. They, they, actually, they actually addressed how there was both um, more or less squats described right, by right. the Imperium and uh, Demirg described by the Tau. And they pretty much said that both the Tau and the Imperium had been dealing with yeah. Um, the Votan, and not really realizing it, or each other, or like yeah. any, not quite putting any of the point numbers together. They're like, both of you are correct. Nobody really cared. Um, some of the Demirg actually have joined the Tau Empire. 
other Demirg, um, I don't know if they reckoned that away, but there were actually like two brotherhoods of Demirg that literally had joined the Tau Empire. Oh, wow. I didn't um, realize that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that, again, has been reckoned away with the release of Votan, but also um, they they just work with them a lot. Yeah. They're Al- traitors. Yeah. Allies is not a thing anymore. Presumably, they'd be like the closest of allies right, if it's such right. a thing was a thing. Right. Because there used to be that ally matrix, right? Yeah. Yeah, not not a thing anymore. Yeah, um, Tau mostly had like a ton of allies to begin with, but presumably these guys for sure would be. So the Demirg space dwarves. Um, moving on. Okay, this is a Galg G A L G. Now wow. Galg have been drawn in two different ways. Wow. First, an older Galg art form basically showed a um, a frog man. Oh, okay. Modern is, Galg yeah, look like is, this. This is very different from a frogman. Very different. Modern Galg look like this. And um, I don't know what happened, but Galg have recently had a lot of their... Um, uh, G-A-L-G. G-A-L-G. Yeah. Galg have recently... I've never heard of this. ...had a lot of their um, uh, lore expanded upon. If you actually, like, here's the... Brett, the Lexiconum article, you can yeah. see this is a lot more than most oh, wow. client races yeah, have like, on them. That's um, multiple paragraphs. Yeah, they, it says here, they live on a planet, they created a paradise world that knowed no suffering, um, and then th- they had kind of like a folklore of maybe some evil gal that lived under their planet. Oh, evil Sub subterranean evil gal. That's about the worst thing in their life that happened. When the Tau encountered them, there's there's this kind of like Ooh, did the Tau force them to join or not? Right, right, as you um, do. And so the Tau got, uh, the Tau got like this. They, they landed and they were like, "Hey, join the Tau, join the greater good." And the Gal were like, "Okay." <laughs> and many of the Gal were like, "We were pretty much doing Jack like like when they showed up, and it, we were like wasting our potential." Uh, but then there's also some Gal who and the lore has support this both ways. Who were like, "No, things were better before we joined the Tau Empire." Right. Interesting. Okay. Um, Can I interrupt you for a yeah. sec, Zach? Mm-hmm. Um, I just noticed. So I'm going, this is the, my first time sort of looking at this sprue in detail. Let's go back to this for a second. Um, and I just noticed something really. So there's two things that are interesting to me. There's some shoulder pads here that have like Tau Tech on them, that have like panel lines and a little sept icon. I had no idea that like that this was getting added. And, 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 uh, and it, I was chatting with Chicken earlier today, and he was showing me some 3D printed options for this. Um, but I didn't realize there was one on the sprue that you could you could convert, or you could use, put on your model that's like a Tau Tech shoulder pad. And then the second thing that I just noticed, there's an aerial. There's like a, um, like an antenna, you know, that, that the Tau wear on like mm-hmm. the side of their head. A lot of them, right? Uh, there's one one on the sprue. So I'm super curious, like, which of these crude heads is going to have... Oh, I bet I bet it's this guy. He's got a hole in the side of his head right here. Um, That's super cool. Yeah, he's going to have some Yeah, Chicken of, just mentioned. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, this is this is very interesting to me. Very interesting. Because we've not seen... We've not seen crude with this level of Tau Tech integration before. Well, Brett... Not quite true. Um, Greg has some stuff. Oh, does he? Yeah, he has some stuff. Well, actually, I don't know if it's Tau, but he has like some weird tech stuff on it. Maybe oh, it isn't that's Tau. true. He's maybe... got like an eyepiece or something. Yeah, right? maybe it isn't Tau. Um, okay, so yeah, the Galg also. Right, Galg. Um, yeah, that that's it. Um, they they use um, I think they use sonic weapons. Is like yeah, they use sonic weaponry. Um, anyway, they're they're that's that's the Galg. Okay. Yeah, they are. Okay, halfway through. They're like got, snake snake people. Yeah, we've got three more. Tentative. By the way, I didn't include Vespid in this list I, or Kroot. I, right. I included the weird ones. Okay, this one is kind of interesting. This is like a Talarian dog soldier. Yeah. Um, this race is described as short little lizard dog alligator men. Um, <laughs> they've been around forever. They got virus bombed by the Imperium during the Great Crusade. Their you know, home planet. I, checks out. They super hate humanity. Um, and this is the main also, reason that they've allied up with the Tau. Um, yeah. they, they're kind of a small, militant race, and they saw that basically joining the Tau was probably their best shot of staying alive and also 
periodically getting revenge on the getting Imperium. Revenge, yeah. Um, seems like these guys would actually be a really cool addition to the army. I've always kind of imagined that if they added a new race, these guys would be reasonable. Although, you know, what role they filled in the thing would be yeah, interesting. I'll remain to be seen, yeah. yeah. Tolarian uh, dog soldiers. I remember discussions about these a long time ago, and there being no sort of official art, and so people who were just kind of free to do their own conversion. This is it. This is official art. That's official art. This is official art. This is from uh, um, somebody's bar napkin. Super. No, it looks like that. Um, it's like it's designed to be like a inquisitor. This is from the book. Um, oh, from xenology. Xenology. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. This is official art. Got it. All right. Yeah, I think only the polar bear was an official art. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Th- here's here's kind of a new one. Um, these are charpactin. Charpactin. <laughs> yeah. Charpactin, this is are from this latest drawing that came out, I think, oh, in the I Ninth this. Ed book. Um, and Charpactin are these mushroom mind control creatures. Mushroom, yeah, psychic mind control people. They typically worked... Um, yeah, and by the way, sorry, sorry. If you look up dog so the dog soldier guys online and look at Google Images, somebody did convert... Um, the, very well done. These are back on... Advanced style tactic for everyone. Yeah, skinks. Is, this is Sebastian did this, I think. With yeah. skinks, right? Yeah. Um, they he they have made them with like lizard men. Um, I not Saurus warriors. I'm pretty sure it was skinks. I think they use Saurus warriors. The Saurus warriors. The, the old, old, the old ones. The, the one, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> so Charpactin um, are shown here blasting away with multiple guns, multiple like, like integral guns. Just like yeah. look at these guys. Oh my gosh. Um, for what is supposed <laughs> to be like a peaceful race of plant people, like. This guy is going ham. Yeah, he's going ham. <laughs> and yeah, Brett's point, um, they're mostly part of the Tau water cast. Oh, interesting. Okay. They use their um their mind control on other races. I guess the Tau have, I don't know if it's gone into detail about how the Tau avoid it or if they do avoid it. But the Charpactin basically kind of help the Tau water cast, um, you know, get their way. And that's really the Tao way is first to make sure you can to try to avoid the war and like right do, you know get what you want out of you know with with negotiation quote unquote right because then you don't have to commit your your military forces right yeah um, because your military forces are busy fighting most of the races that most, are, yeah. are playable races in forty k right orcs tyranids. Yeah. <laughs> like the, can you th- there's a reason none of these are playable races because they all were just like. Cool, greater good sounds, sounds so, good so to me. To be, so to be honest with you, a lot of people don't really make for how, a good board game. I know, I'm sure Chicken does, but if you look how many races are in the Tao Empire, it is a lot. It is yeah, a, really you, a lot. Just don't, we just don't hear about them. You don't hear them. about them, but it's yeah. like two dozen. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a wild number of races. Um, okay, so Charpactin. Um, and I feel like there's, <laughs> there's a clever jingle in there somewhere. Like, if you're... <laughs> You, you know, well, you're like not I acting said, unless ask, you've got charpactin. Or... Yeah, ask your doctor if charpactin is right for you. Yeah. Um, okay, so finally here um, we have. Oh my god, these are tyrannids. Actually, right? this is this is final. No, so these are um, L- L- Locato, I believe it's pronounced oh, wow. Loxato. It's like L O. Let me see here, L O X A T. It's kind of like axolotl. But like, like without the axe? Luxato, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so these guys are actually not officially part of the greater good. They have not officially joined the Tau Empire. Okay. Um, however, they are um, mercenaries throughout much of the galaxy. Um, and they are... Um, so you... So you wouldn't know, like, you have to have read a specific book to know they work for the Tau, and that book is called Firecast. Yeah. Um, and in Firecast, um, in, in Firecast, uh, they work with the Tau forces on that planet against the Imperium. Hmm. Um, and they are actually also regular servants of chaos, <laughs> in particular corn. What? In particular, corn. What? So you wouldn't think that like you'd work one day for corn and then the next day yeah, for the Tau exactly. Empire. But I would not think that. You're right. Those are probably two factions in 40k that have almost no lore interacted with each other ever, um, and z- almost zero interest in each other. Um, but that is what's going on. Um, so the Luxado work for both. They are um, pretty much like as you can see are Komodo dragons. Yeah. 
Um, they are not bipedal. They walk on all four. They have this neuro-linked Fletchette Discharger weapon right, that they're most famous for using that shoots kind of like a, um, <clears throat> a, can like a, a bomb that then explodes with like shrapnel. Um, is it like an organic weapon? No. No, they carry a gun. No, they have technology, and I guess this is like their favorite gun. But they also just fight with their claws and stuff a lot as well. Okay, all right. Um, and are they like super psychic? The, I don't know if they, that they're psychic at all. Okay. But they do, like I said, have some mirror link technology right. with their gun yeah. that lets them have their arms and stuff screwed up. They are, um, what was I going to say? Oh, they are, uh, um, very fast and agile. Yeah. But Makes also sense. Um, not particularly stealthy because you can smell them because they stink. And they smell like a mixture of rancid milk and mint. Crushed mint and rancid oh, milk. Wow. Which, if you've ever smelled something really bad with a good smell, try to layer it on top of it, it almost makes it worse. Right? Like, oh, yeah. Right? Like bad milk and yeah, yep. mint. Like mint, crushed mint smells nice. But then who wants to also smell rancid milk with it? Right. Um,. So these guys are interesting, yeah. And like I said, they're not technically part of the the, um, the Tao Empire, but the Tao hire them. Uh, when they're not when they're not working for chaos, the Tao hire them. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're they're pretty scary. They're bigger than humans. Um, there's no good size thing here, but it just described them as being about like a little bit larger than humans. Okay. Um. Okay, so listen, that's that's it. Quick quick recap before we hit the rankings. We've got the floaty polar bear, the Nisikar. We've got the Demir, which basically means we're voting on Votan. Yeah. We've got the Gaug. <laughs> We've got the dog soldier guy. Yeah. We've got Car uh, Charpactin. I feel like this guy has to be the top. And we've got Lakato. Char Charpactin is like Okay, so let's 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 jump into it. Yep. Um here we go. Let me pull this up. Sorry, it looks a little goofy there for a second. Uh, let me pull this guy up. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Can we just do Charpactin first? You think Charpactin is first. He's the yeah, first one here. That's you, my that's my S tier vote. Yeah, I think Charpactin is S tier. In addition to being the best artwork, yep. um, it's a mushroom. There's a lot of things going on. It's a mushroom, and he's got like... I mean, there's a few He's mind in. control. Mind control. They also flash colors. They change colors they all the time. They change colors. And he's just, like, blasting away with multiple he's guns. He's got multiple guns. He's got multiple arms. Like, why even bother with crisis suits at this yeah. point? <laughs> we just need more Charpactin in the Empire. More Charpactin. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the, the Demirg. Now, um, do we do we rate the Demirg on his own, on this artwork? And <laughs> I mean, um, I think that's the question right because yeah. this artwork is pretty bad let's start by rating we... him on his artwork i think he goes here but yeah. the question is uh, we know <laughs> that so frumpy we know that this is some imperial man's drawing of whatever weird race he saw working with the Tao and empire years ago and now it's been come to realize that this is actually a yeah this is actually a votan um, so all in all, Brad, what do you, how, how do you feel about, I don't know, the and... artwork's pretty bad. He's like a, he's like a frumpy bear wearing a diaper. The like, artwork is bad. Yeah. But I think, I feel like that's got to count for something, right? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I, I have to be honest with you. I also sort of feel like, um, I, <sighs> It's hard to say. Um, rules wise, GW has really wanted to be careful with ally stuff. Yeah. Um, outside of the Imperium, which has a whole bunch of races <laughs> that can ally together. Um, uh, but they don't really want anyone else to ally, including Chaos for some reason. Um, so, uh, you know, for me, I, I feel like they had the opportunity to expand this lore when they released Votan, and they really did. They really shied away right. from it. Right. That's and true. I don't know how you felt, but as a Tau player, I felt like a little bit. I was bummed by that. I was yeah. bummed. I was like, you guys had some opportunity to do cool lore, and you, you didn't even have to do, like, crazy lore. Like, oh, yep, Tau can just take the mirror units. You didn't have to do anything like that. But like Chris was saying earlier, they, they you know, they kind of retconned one of the brotherhoods yeah. that they said joined, uh, and then the other one they haven't even mentioned. Um, this is an interesting race that I feel like GW, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I think Votan lore sucks. 
And I think oh, what's man. sad about it is that GW had a lot of opportunities to make interesting Votan lore. Um, the only thing I kind of did like is that they were like, oh, yeah, you know, they both, both the Tau and the Imperium had been encountering them and not exactly understanding what it was that they yeah, were encountering. Okay. And also, you know, not really caring. But I think that they, they kind of did them dirty. And by them, I mean the Tau, the Imperium, and the Demir. <laughs> yeah. Or the Votan. What, um, what do, so I've not had this conversation with you before. How, what don't you like about Votan lore? Um, I don't like the way that it's sort of... A lot of Votan lore kind of doesn't try to address the issue that, hey, there's suddenly a new race. It's sort of just like, oh, oh here's the I Votan. See. I see. It's always been here. You just, <clears throat> we just didn't tell you about it. Yeah, okay. And, right. And my point is that they actually That's had... a good point. They actually had, like, what I'm... I guess what I'm saying is I think they had kind of an interesting... Oper- they set themselves up to not do that. They, they could have talked about through the lens of the Tau and the Imperium. Sure, sure. Um, and they really shied away from doing that, yeah. right? And they kind of almost just acted like they've always been there. And right. And it's like, here's this new... Like, it wasn't like, where were these guys? Why yeah. haven't these guys been around? Um, and it was a choice to do that. Um, but I don't know that I... Uh, if if the Tau and Imperial stuff had not already existed, with like what's a squat, what's a Demir, right, and then then they then they did it this way, I might be okay. Um. Oh yeah, we'll turn off this cab Cavalier thing here. That's that's not related to this. There we go. We just won't have any. So um, yeah, I think. I think I'm I'm keeping this in D. What about you? Yeah, I'm I'm not a huge fan. All right. I talked uh, Fred into D. I or he I, just doesn't care anymore. I, I could I could I, I was gonna suggest C. <clears throat> C. Okay. Just, just I, because like the Votan did give Tao their ion. That's technology interesting. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know, like that was all that was all pre Leagues of Votan. It was all Demiurg, but mm-hmm. which is which is what we're which is what we're grading here, right? Exactly. Okay. All right, next is the Galg. Okay. How do you feel about the Galg? And the Galg is the tentacle monster? Yeah, that previously was a frogman. Previously was a frogman. Uh, has some... Remind me of his, like, special powers. What's his superpower? Um, they have sonic weaponry. Sonic weaponry, that's right. They came from a peaceful civilization of these disgusting tentacle creatures. And they weren't going to join... But, well, then, but then they were like, our lives are better now. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, apparently um, the main kind of point is that they felt like, some of them, I guess, felt like they were wasting their potential right, right. by not, by just kicking it. <clears throat> I guess I would, I'm I'm, re- I'm reconsidering now. I think I want to put Demiurg in B and I want to put these guys in C. Oh, these guys are less interesting to you yeah, than Demiurg. Yeah, they are. All right, well, we always, we have aggressive... Um, we have kind of aggressive. Oh, once we put it in, we're no, not not that. But let's just keep them both in C. Okay, that's fine. They can right. both suck. I mean, <laughs> honestly, Jameer are a low C. Okay, let's talk about Luxado. Yeah. Um, I read a book with Luxado in them. Oh, you did. Yeah, the Fire Warrior. Yeah, or Firecast okay, yeah. book. And and were they cool in the book? Yeah, they're pretty cool in the book. Um, the book is like I've I often blab about the book as being like one of these things where it's very annoying how cr- cr- aren't better. Is this, the, is this the Simon Spurrier book Fire, that's been the video games based on? No, 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 no. It's called Firecast. Not Firecast, Fire yeah. not Fire Warrior. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, yeah, so I thought that these guys in the book were pretty cool. I was going to say, I read Fire Warrior and there was no Luxado in, in there. Yeah, yeah um, and yeah, this is the book I've cited before where I'm like, oh my god, Crude are depicted as being absolutely terrifying. Right, right, okay. Um, and then the rules just kind of meh on the board. Yep. Um, yeah, I remember you talking about this this concept before. In that kind of same vein where they're fighting um, the Crude in the jungle, the Luxado and Vespid are also there. Yeah, oh wow. So okay. it's, it's sort of like they're fighting all That's three cool. of these alien races. Um, I think... I and, think and are they badass? They're all pretty badass. Yeah, okay. they're all depicted as being very uh, out. The 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 guardsmen are very outmatched by these guys. Okay, all all of these things That's together. Cool. Um, and sonic guns are they? Do you feel these like guys don't have sonic guns? These are the ones that have a. Oh, sorry. They have integrated psychic. They can commune with their weapons. <clears throat> they no. Uh, yes. Well, it's described as. Um, 
It's described as um, uh, Neuralink. Neuralink, yeah. yeah. Elon Musk is working on it. Elon Musk, yeah. Um, I mean, that all sounds pretty cool to me, um, but I've not read the book, so I'm happy to defer to you. But I, I would, I would say, I would say B. All right. Well, I'm, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna put them in A. Put them in A. Okay. <laughs> is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, I feel like, well, I don't know. Actually, let's see. What else do we have here? Um, let's 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 put them in A for now. I, I I think low A, high B. Okay. What about the floating polar bear? Um, you know more about these than me because the, these these have models. They have some presence in in, in BFG, Battlefield Gothic. Right? Yeah. They have models in Battlefield Gothic. You can you can take a flotilla of space polar bears that are drifting through space in in their caravan. And then get woken up to the <laughs> because a torpedo is launched at them by an imperial convoy. Um, I really, really, really wanted these to like make an appearance in 40k. People when 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 every time there's a new codex, people are like, give Sa Tau a way to participate in the psychic phase, not because they all of a sudden have like developed psychic abilities, but because they have a psyker that they've allied with who you can bring in an army. And and people always want you to have access to Nick's, Nick Asar. These aren't the only ones, too. There's there's That's a little true. worm Kru called Kru a... Kru can be psychic. Kru can be psychic. <clears throat> and there's also a little worm creature called a Naga Naga. Right. That right. Um, is like a little tiny worm that could, um, you know, be put in some kind of Tau tech like um, suit thing or something. I think, like, they're not, like... These, these are not badass... Polar bears, um, but they like helped the Tau get get spacefaring technology, which is cool. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say, and they they look pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, so I'd I'd say B. B. Okay, I think B two. They also again they actually have models. Yeah, they actually less. have models. That's like of all the things we're going to be rating here, other than maybe the demiurge. Um, well, definitely the Demiurge also have models. Have models. Um, yeah, they're the only ones without models. Or who have models. Yeah. I think the Luxado should get some models. Hmm. They'd be cool. What if what if the Lone, Lone Spears mount is a Luxado? Does it look like it? Kind of looks, I showed you the picture. It's like, kind of looks like it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe actually. Maybe they ride the Luxado. Um... The, um, your model, don't worry, everything's okay. <laughs> I like how you had to preface whatever you Your model's you're about coming out that. okay, but wow, it's ha the, the, the guy, the, cr the carnivore, the, the ox itself went together very easily. Yeah. The carnivore going on to the ox is, is not great. Oh, okay. It's, I'm surprised for a modern kit. It's like, I'm not in love with it. This is what's happening here. It doesn't, it doesn't have like ways that it. Like, obvious places that things attach. You Very just kind of have to, like, yeah. put it on there and hope for the best. Kind of, yeah. Oh, so, you, oh, because you've done one already. I've done one, yeah. Okay, you know. You kind of just have to, like, I mean, his hand has a spot that it goes. Uh, but his feet just kind of, like, you just kind of, like, stick them to This the guy's back. a little bit the other way around. Oh, his feet had his, a spot? His feet had a spot. They had these uh, holes that the peg yeah. okay. pegs had points that they went into. Oh, nice. His hand is kind of the one that doesn't have a spot. Yeah. But it, I think it can kind of just go his left hand there. Yeah, that's where it goes. Yeah. yeah. That's, but that's it. But it's not exactly like, there's not like a little divot or anything. No, there's not. It's just like, no, it just kind of goes yeah, there. Yeah. You just, yep, you got it. Um, okay, last but not least is the dog soldier. These guys are amazing. You like the dog man? Yeah. I do yeah, too. I'm super into the dog man. Um, a tear? Yeah. Yeah, I think the dog... Men are maybe I don't know, Carpactin might I guess be what I want models of the most if I if I'm honest. Yeah, giant. Like how big are these? Are these Riptide sized? Carpactin. Yeah, uh, they certainly look like it in that that artwork. <laughs> there's no, there's the only other thing in that artwork is more Carpactin. There's, there's no <laughs> way to know how big they are. Uh, I mean the perspective. The, the way they are depicted the pers perspective. Oh, you're imagining the Carpactin are huge. I'm imagining they're gigantic. That's interesting. You don't think so, huh? How, ma how big know. do you imagine they are? <clears throat> um, Can you pull up just the picture? Uh, <laughs> no. I mean... Can you go back to that oh, picture? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I can. Sorry. 
Um, here we go. Car packed in. Oh, wait. There. That's the polar bear. There we go. <clears throat> Look, there's like... Uh, I guess there really isn't anything <clears throat> for context, huh? No. I was hoping there was like a tree, but like he is the tree. Also, a tree is not great. Shut up, sorry. The tree is not great context either. <laughs> They're shooting like BB guns. <laughs> yeah, the size of a frog. But this is why they're so deadly. Look how many there are, and they're just launching up into the air in a normal guardsman. All right, I don't think so. Like if they were, they're shooting up. So if they were, um, so Surrey's theory is actually given some credence here, but. If they're riptide size, who would they be shooting? If they're, I mean, sure, somebody. These could. are they're fighting titans right now. Like I am imagining, these are fighting like imperial knights in this picture. That's what I'm imagining. Look at those guns; they're just blazing away. Oh my god! All right. So anyway, I think um, if 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 one of these things, what about you? If one of these things got a model, yeah, what would you want? Um. Like a 40K model. Yeah. Right? Like a, like a, like uh, like Talarian dog soldier. You want the dog soldier? Yeah. What do you? What role in the tower army do you think they would fill? Oh, no, you're right. The Talarian dog soldier would would not fill. No, no I'm not trying to talk about it. No, I think, I think I like the the fast-moving lizard with the sonic, or with the uh, neuralinked weapon. Yeah. The, what role would, I mean, like, are they not kind of similar to Crusoe? Similar to Vespid in that or role. Or yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, um, yeah, the Talaran dog soldiers could be sort of a heavy mm. infantry that's durable, but maybe not super, maybe melee, but like not very good at it, but just like durable. Mm -hmm. But also um, keep in mind that, I don't remember what I was going to say. The dogs are, oh, they're small. They're smaller than humans. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, they're, they're smaller. They're shorter than the average human. Uh, D tier Liberty Furs. I personally would put Demirg in D tier, which is also, you know, kind of the only other one that's actually a playable race in 40k. So, yeah, you're not wrong. For me, I, they're all at least C tier. Um, I don't know. I guess I would want uh, maybe the Car Car Carfactin. The, a mushroom guy. A mushroom. So let's put. Let's say that they are. Oh, I don't know their size though. <laughs> we don't. Yeah. Let, let me. Let me look it up. Let me look and see. What are? Um, can you imagine a fight between them and orcs? Because orcs are presumably also like fungus, right? Mm hmm. So can you imagine? This is like the battle of the fungoid creatures between Carpactin and orcs. Carpactin and orcs. Let's have a look. Let's see if we can get to the mystery of of the Carpactin. Um, and their size. How big is a Carpactin? Yeah, they, they look giant to me <clears throat> in that picture. <laughs> I mean, kind of, but there's no context for there's it. There's no I, context. I love, okay. Um, oh my god, it doesn't say. They, they, like I said, they're, they're part of the edification corpse, which is the water cast. Right. Um... Encountered the Tau Empire's water cast during the Fifth Sphere expansion, so pretty new. They oh, interesting. communicate it's entirely true. in bursts of ultraviolet color. Oh, wow. Yeah. With sh whose strobing emanations prove surprisingly effective at subduing and transfixing living beings, making them docile and amenable. Um, but no real speaking of their size. Um, they're in the Shadow Sun book. Okay. Um, which I haven't read. And then they, they talk about them briefly in the Eighth Ed Tau Codex. Oh, interesting. But ne neither of these things are any kind of... Well, in order for them to be useful in negotiations with Watercast, they have to be, like, vaguely humanoid size, right? They can't like, be super They big. can't be as big as a building if you're going to, like, go into a meeting and negotiate your... You know, something with, with somebody. Wouldn't it be funny if we stopped working on building models and the rest of the stream, the next 55 minutes was just us speculating about Charpactin? <laughs> <laughs> and then it was our most watched stream ever. Um, two that men, would be, that two, would be interesting. Two 40-year-old men uh, <laughs> speculate on fungus 
And, and, size. And, size only. <laughs> so not really anything else about them. Just <laughs> How big? <laughs> and it's fake fungus. It's not even actual fungus. Yeah. Okay, well, we did it. We, we, uh, if you guys need to see the rankings again, um, just, I, I, I... This will be up on VOD. I, nav- I navigated away from that page. So, there we have it. Um, okay. We do our, we always do our, our promos here, of course. We want to remind everybody uh, now, oh my gosh, where is it? There it is, boom. Now, not, not a bad time. That is the winner. That's Timbit. I don't know why that one got, oh, because I pressed the same one twice. Chrome for it. Please uh, consider um, hashtag. Oh my gosh, crowing for it! It's up there, and this month's theme is illusions. And um, this is we're trying to just get people to hobby, and you know, uh, most of our most most of you guys hobby anyway. So why not throw something up in illusions? I'll be honest with you, we ha- we've now judged two of these. Yeah, and um, the theme. It doesn't play super strongly. It doesn't it. play super strongly. So um, anything can be an illusion if you think about it. If you try hard enough, yeah. Um, the the winning the winners get to um, kind of help uh, Soups, uh, who you see here, one of our mods. Yeah. Uh, a great mod, great uh, supporter of the channel, great friend. They help him. Uh, you're going to get to tell him. Uh, what how to paint part of this casting crow model yeah have you seen any of this so far yes it's yeah. bonkers it's but not not like awful like not like no no it's not, just not like you wouldn't put it on the tabletop um maybe, uh, maybe. Uh, okay okay all right, all right. anyway um like uh, like chat like is very very much leaning into the intent of this okay, which is okay. like everything is just wildly different yeah <laughs> um so it, but but it's 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 looking good like soups is doing an amazing job with the paint with the paint yeah. work but yeah, yeah. but it is very all over the place i also um will send you out a physical prize if you don't mind sharing your address um laura uh who won february's challenge um got one of these little mini vacuum cleaners oh, that yeah. i got turned on to by rudy um i hope laura is enjoying her little mini vacuum cleaner i actually sent her an orange one mm-hmm. yeah it comes in orange turns Fun. out um, I need to actually reach out to Timbit and um, ask him. Get his yeah. address. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so we can have an excuse to send him a prize. Yeah, it, it's just a fun way to, to hobby. And this is, a good, this is a good chance that your existing hobby scheme and project already fits into whatever it is that yeah. our theme is. Um, and if not, make up a fun backstory. All right, I am three models in. I am just finished my first one. You finished your first one, so you're halfway done. Mm-hmm. Oh and wait! I have to put that on him. There's a oh, there's like a, a there's grenade. a shoulder pad. There's it, a shoulder pad and a grenade. And uh, no, I got the grenade. I need the oh, okay. uh, there's a there's a there's a sidearm here, which I love. Oh, he's got a little pistol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a holdout weapon, as it were. So you are just about halfway done. We are just about half. We are just over halfway on time. Yeah, we're gonna close our poll here in one minute. <clears throat> For anyone who wants to jump in favor of the Sith, mm. uh, the Sith are losing poorly. And a reminder, the Sith are um, the giant snake people bodyguards for the Drukhari um, Archons and, and stuff. That's oh, the snake. The, yeah, yeah. yeah they, S- is there an L in there? Sylph? 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 I think they pronounce it. Anyway. Okay. Um, these are, uh, yeah, they were, oh my god, here's yet, yeah, there's a lot of, I'm, I'm a little more used to, um, I feel like things having things to stick a thing into. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, you just stick it on. There's yeah. a lot of, like, stick it on. The sidearm, the grenades, they're just like, put it wherever you want, man. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, Sith, um are interesting uh i remember do you remember when they were like this might have been before you started playing bright do you remember when there was this thing called the sith party bus uh yeah oh you're being uh well, hi, Bartok. investigated by bartok sorry man we're working yeah we're building crew yeah get out here please get your claws off his pants <laughs> um, um do you remember this sith i party do bus? yeah yeah basically yeah. um it had to just do with you could 
surround an archon with a bunch of them. I don't know how you built the unit. Um, they were tough and very durable um, and fast. And then, like, the whole unit just moved up, and then you kind of, like, charge something. The Sith themselves didn't do much, but the archon is, like, right. you know, Drukhari archons are, like, They're Dr- Drukhari characters are, like, probably going to die if you look at them, but then they also do, you know, 24 points of damage right. or something yeah. Yeah, crazy. They so Destroy entire units on their own. Right. Um, hey, Bartok, did we not talk about this? Meg, can we get a Bartok uh, extraction? extraction? Can we get a Bartok extraction, please, Meg, when, you, when you're when you caught up? Um, <clears throat> Bartok does not do the check in, checking in on me. He's, he's also fine. He, yeah, I know, but... It's like, you know, I hate him. So. No, I'm just kidding. I love little Bardock. But uh, Bardock is really, uh, I, I don't know if you've ever observed this about him, Brad. He has no boundaries. He has no boundaries. That's and true. It, yeah. Meg and I don't have a child, but it makes me wonder, like, if we had a kid, what, what, with what, the what kid, might have happened by accident. Yeah. Because yeah. this cat has <clears throat> zero boundaries. He's very friendly. He's very friendly. He's very smart. He's very interesting for a cat, for sure. But he is... He has crap boundaries. He needs to work on that. All right, I've got a choice here. Let's have a look. Let's see what <clears throat> Brett is up to. I'm working on number 11. I have a choice of... These two look almost identical. There's like a guy with his gun raised, and it, it's slightly lower down. It's like, we gave you a choice here. Isn't that great? Um... So I guess I'm going to go with this guy. He looks a little more menacing. I'm not sure. 11B. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with this guy. Oh, but there's a D option. Okay. Well, <clears throat> yeah, here we go. I don't know if we're getting that Bartok extraction. That's fine. That's fine. He's he's chilled out. Well, he just touched me. <laughs> Um, we're closing the poll. The winner's Crute. Good thing we're doing a Crute, um, a Crute stream. We are. Stream. Yeah. Maybe it's just people didn't know what Sileth is. Um, how do- <laughs> I, I mean, I kind of didn't think they would win. Yeah? Okay. To be honest with you. Um, <clears throat> one those, person. Right, those right, right. dumb orangutans, you were talking about there, the, uh, I, I the Jakaro it. weaponsmiths, yeah. right? You know when people, like, do you remember when you first started playing Tau, you'd meet, like, a horrible, crappy... Old timey forty k neckbeards who were like, I hate the town. They don't belong in forty k. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. And there's like a whole cohort of people that want to let everyone know who, like, this is our favorite faction. They're like, I hate your faction. It needs to go away. Yeah, uh, yeah. Screw those guys. But that's how I feel about these orangutans. About the, the I Jakaro hate them. Weapons, man. I hate them. I've I played a game one time against somebody that I kind of knew not too well, um, and I intentionally lost the game to do everything I could to kill one of these. <laughs> Um, because I just want them. You just I just want to see them get blasted to pieces by Tau weaponry. Yeah. And so the Jakaro weaponsmith. Yeah, it, it exists as a model. It has a model, and it and it has rules to this day. It's like an inquisitorial retinue. It's like a guy who's like the the galaxy's foremost engineer, tinkerer. Yeah. And he just like builds builds the best guns. You know, you know what the problem, and for some reason gets a gets a pass on being exterminated as a species. Exactly, exactly by, by humanity. There's as a this result. weird like, there's this weird lore um, incongruity about uh, having. So I've never been a big Imperium person. Right. I've always played Alien and Chaos factions, mostly Xenos factions. There's this bizarre incongruity in the Imperial lore where they're really horrible. But then they get, like, this scrappy, cute treatment on things. And it's kind of like, are these, like, no other no other um, lore or reality has ever really done this, right? Like, there's no scrappy, cute part to the Nazi regime <laughs> that we all look, we're like, whoa, man, good thing, whoa. good thing Nazis are gone. Oh, but you know what? We love those monkeys they had. We love Nazi monkeys. That yeah. was cute, guys. Like, this is so weird. And, like, no one addresses this, like, bizarre, like... Hey, the Imperium is really bad. Oh, but guess what? But it's fine because they it's have cute monkeys. It's fine because here's a cute monkey. Like, yeah, it's so it doesn't it has no purpose there. You could put the you could put that monkey in any other faction except for Necrons or Chaos. 
Yeah. You can put it in almost any Xenos faction. Like, okay, here's an example. Like, orcs have a ton of cute little things. Sure, yeah. Right? And the cute little things work in orcs because all orcs do is just, they're they're not, they don't have horrible ideology. Yeah. They're just like, hey, we're just going to go. Just a force of nature. Force of nature. And here are these cute little sharks that we now ride. Or here's squigs. Here's the squig bomb, right? Like all these little things. It totally works. Then they do it to the Imperium. Like, what is the, what are you thinking? You can't add a cute little thing to space Nazis. Right. These are space Nazis. You're playing space Nazis when you play the Imperium. Like, that's a fact. You can't just add a cute thing and expect like chaos to... doesn't have it, right? Yeah, there's no cha- <laughs> there's no chaos cute little thing like cute chaos. I guess Nurgle, but like that's kind yeah, of different. Yeah, Nur- Nurgle. Okay, right. Oh my god. Yeah, I, you guys can clip it all you want. I'm right on this. I'm not. Uh, I'm not going down for this. <laughs> the 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 it is totally bizarre to toss cute little things into a Nazi regime and be like, oh. <clears throat> All right. I'm moving on to guy number two. Moving on to guy number two. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> the monster itself goes together quite easily, I will say. Yeah, and it's fun to build. Yeah. The Crutox, the Rampager. Yeah. Oh, Brett, now might be a good time. Um, we can put this on uh, on the on the camera over okay. there by you. I thought we would show, oh, for yeah. anybody interested... I thought we would show the difference between the old, the new GW mold line remover. Okay. That's the new one. That's the new one. Here's the old one. People love both. Well, people love the old one. I don't think a lot of people know about the new one. Uh, okay. So as you can see, the new one, or the old one, all metal. Maybe you can't see that or tell that. Um, I used to have one of these. It was stolen from me by one of the people, um, maybe one of the people in the room right now. What? Or maybe uh, one of the other people on the channel. What? Are you accusing me of stealing your channel? No. I just, I don't know. I don't I, know. I, I, I'm, using a, I'm using an exacto knife to yeah, do my it, it was stolen. Uh, <laughs> it was stolen by somebody around here. Around we'll just, here. We know okay, that. Okay. We know We know that. It, there's not a lot else to say about it. You know, um, I've given the thief plenty of opportunities to come forward. <laughs> wow. And right. We'll just see what happens one okay. day. One day. One day. Okay, um, so everybody kind of loves the Citadel mold line, old one, the metal, the metal feel and everything. Right, and it works well. And then um, this has got a plastic handle. It has. It's like a vinyl kind of a handle. Yeah. Um, it's a good feel. You can see the Citadel was already rubbed off of it. Right. So I don't know how you feel about that Citadel tools that used to say <clears> there. Uh, more ergonomical. Yep. <laughs> and um, it also has this weird hook. Did you see the hook? Oh, yeah. What's that for? Don't know. The first one doesn't have that? The hook said it was described as... Um, yeah, the, the old one does not have the hook. Uh, it was described as um, helping clear sprues. Oh, wow. Which they all do. Clear sprues. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Like To get, to get a, a bit off the sprue with it? Huh. Oh, maybe... Let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try breaking an entire group model. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I um, no. I literally, no. I, I, don't I don't know, know why I, how how this would do that. I don't know that I've ever used a uh, Citadel mold line remover, and I, um, I feel like this is one of those things that the first time I go to use it, I'm just gonna have this like aha moment and be like, where have you been all my life? Like, well. Let me let me tell you, and, and a lot of people in chat are gonna probably either side with me or call me an idiot. Yeah. Pro- honestly, usually what happens around here is both. Um, they just don't know they're siding with me, like my Nazi space dog. <laughs> I think um, space monkey. Whoa, whoa. <clears throat> um, okay. The alternative is using. A uh, knife, like right, you're using. Which is what I'm doing, yeah. Um, and inevitably, as you use the knife, you find yourself um, <clears throat> typically pushing the knife towards your, the sharp blade towards your thumb and finger. Sure, yeah, yeah. We all do that. And we all inevitably, every now and then, stab each other, ourselves. Stab ourselves. Stab, stab each other. Happens, yeah. <laughs> every now and then, when we're, when we're assembling models, we stab each other. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this just prevents that from happening. But right. here's the problem. Um, you cannot, av- I find, you cannot avoid... Having to bust that guy out still every now and then. Yeah, every once in a while. Every now and then, you still need that thing, um, the the exacto blade. the The mold line remover doesn't do everything, um, all the time perfectly. So, 
yeah, the, the knife is ultimately the only tool you do need. It's just that you're constantly threatening your own body by using it. Right. And um, I feel like the... <clears throat> Four ninety ten. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm trying to interpret instructions. I feel like the other thing is uh, I've noticed, and this is a little weird to me, but if let's say you you install a new blade mm -hmm. on your knife, and uh, your hobby knife, and then you use it for to assemble an entire box set, gone. Like the D knife is dull done by the end of done. it. Done. Yeah. Plastic. Um, plastic messes. With it. That's and, like a known thing. And for whatever reason, <clears throat> your mold line remover tool doesn't like doesn't that. get dull. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So I think like that's one of the other compelling things for me about having a dedicated mold line remover tool is that it it just sort of and and, and hobby blades aren't cheap either. Like um, they're not crazy expensive, but like if you replace them as often as you really kind of need to, yeah, that they, they they go that, that yeah. adds up. Like adds you're up. saying, like you take out a box of fireworks and you use a blade that it's gone, it's done. Yeah, box of crew, yeah, but ten ten infantry, for sure, done with the blade. Blade is blade is not not sharp anymore, yeah. and and like, you know, you can you can stretch it a little bit if you're doing things that don't require a sharp blade, but. Yeah, if you sort of do 10 infantry and then want to do something that does require a sharp blade, you're going to struggle a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel like maybe the answer, if, if you're not interested in having a dedicated mold line remover tool, is to have maybe two X-Acto handles. One that you keep a less sharp blade on just for mold line removal, and, the, and then another that, that you keep a fresh blade on. But, you know, there's problems with that, too. Yeah. You still got another tool at that point. It's just an, a second exacto. The only other problem with the mold line remover tool is that if you have it here in the studio, somebody will someone steal. Will take it. Someone will steal. Apparently, it. yeah. Not sure who. Not sure who. Someone though will take it. Will lose your mold line remover. <clears throat> maybe, maybe, yeah. Maybe it's just lost. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe you know what Bartok was in the room when you said that. So, very well could have been him. Yeah, it'll show up. I mean, here's the thing. One day, <coughs> the thief will return it, I'm sure. Zach, how do you feel about um, crew carrying around meat snacks? Oh, um... I, I think I like it. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm into it. This is... Or is it prevalent in the new models? There's a fair bit of it, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it was pretty prevalent in the old models. Yeah, I, it's a... I, um... I, when I built my old models, I didn't I didn't put any of the meat on because I was like, a it's like another thing that I need to paint, mm -hmm. and b I don't know it just felt weird to me, like strapping a bunch of meat to to my models to yeah. to, to carry around. Nowadays, you adding the meat in? Um, yeah, I think I think I'm going to. I I so I've had to do meat. This is my first meat rodeo. Uh, or actually, I should say, um, my not my only adding meat to crew was my first meat rodeo, but not my f only one. Ogres also have ogres a, have a ton that thing of meat. too, yeah. Yeah, and what I learned from the crew is that it, I preferred. What I ended up doing is, <clears throat> I really made a big deal um, when I did the ogres and the gargants and stuff. I did a ton of. Um, I I made a point to leave them off and airbrush all of them. I found oh. I found I much prefer to just take like, like put them on the corks or however whichever way, and I just like airbrushed and and then I have like this this when as I was building my ogres I just had this like uh, little cup of like a bunch of meat pieces and metal pieces and buckets and all the stuff that, like canteens that they carry around. I kind of liked it like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing one here, and I don't, I don't like this one. It's like it's just too big. There's just like too much going on there. It's like, it's like a whole. It's a, it's a meat plus grenades plus a knife, like all. I don't like all that. on yeah, one giant I piece. I don't it's like, like that. Almost either. like a backpack or something like that. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of with you on that. And it just feels like too much. Um. I'm going to leave that off. Like, I like the bits that are <clears throat> kind of just small. Like, a, a small little knife or something like that. Like, that's cool. I like that. But I know I'm going to have to paint all this stuff. Yeah, just like you said. 
Yeah, it, it, it adds up. Um, let's see. I'm having like a, a heck of a time combining this, getting this Kroot's head part. Oh, is this it? I feel like mostly I'm like putting a thing on a thing and just rotating it until it snaps. Yeah, it. this is like the new Maybe. skill in, in assembling GW kits is you just like, you just smush them together and you kind of like rotate them until they click. Is that, yeah. is yeah. that, and it's not clicking, you're saying? Well, it will. Eventually. Um, it, no, I, I, I know. I, it's fine. It's me. Um, I'll, I'll get there. It'll, 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 it'll happen. But I feel like that's like not, it's like a new skill that we're having to learn as hobbyists. Like mm -hmm. it didn't, that wasn't always part of, part of our hobby skill repertoire. It's these new like digitally designed kits where everything has like half of an arm and a third of a leg and. By the time you get them all together, they, they actually make an assembled model, but nothing is recognizable as anything else until you get it all together. Hmm. Man, this guy's got one foot on the ground, which is always a fraught situation. It's, That's what this rampager has. He's got one foot. One of the crew dogs. One toe. is on the ground. Oh no. Oh, no. This is driving me nuts. Alright, where's this go? <clears throat> um Yeah, I don't know. Uh any of you in chat, uh, do you guys play Crute, play Tau? Are you excited about the Crute detachment? What detachment are you most excited about, I guess? Maybe is a thing that um maybe a better way to phrase the question. Um What detachment are you most excited about, Brett? I am probably actually gonna run the Crute detachment. Fun. Um, either Crute or Montcom. Okay. I feel like a lot of, um, because the Montcom attachment just gives lethal hits, which is, uh, Zach, for you, um, sixes are sixes to hit auto wound. Okay. Yeah. Um, and which is what the Crute struggle with is wounding, right? They struggle with having high strength and they also struggle with AP. Um, but, but there are stratagems to give AP. So, so yeah, like sixes to hit auto wounding is great for crew. So weirdly, like the Mon Cod attachment is actually also good for crew. Um, not as good for crew as the crew detachment is, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I'll probably bounce around between Mon Cod and, and the crew detachment. But yeah, I think I think I'm. I know there's a lot of excitement about the Retaliation Cadre, which is the battle suit focused detachment, mm -hmm. um, which is which is cool. Um, and I played, I played as the Retaliation Cadre in my test game. Yeah. Uh, my first, my first game that I played last week with the new book. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, I don't have any like big, big riptides or storm surges or, you know, a lot of stuff that would, would take advantage of it. And it's a close ranged uh, you have buff as well. Tide storm. Oh, okay, okay. So you have to be close. Like it doesn't really benefit broadsides. Maybe unless you brought an orca. Maybe that's maybe that's the thing I should do. Put broadsides in an orca, dump them out. Is the orca still a thing? I mean, it still exists. Uh, I don't know that it's. It, it it yeah. I don't actually. That's a great question. Yeah. Um, I don't think it. I don't think it broke in the detachment. So I think we could, uh, I think we could still run it. Oh man, I'm looking at some of these uh, different posing options. There's a guy looking through a spyglass. There's a yeah. There's a guy looking through a spyglass. Which is the, sweet. The, um, I think the kill team has that also. Nice. The guy with the spyglass. And then I definitely think I'm gonna build the tangle bomb launchers, which are the uh, blast weapons. Um. They are all in running poses, which is a little weird to me. Well, there's one with bombs actually coming out the front. What do you, what, like like one, of these, one of these tangle bomb launchers actually has, yeah, the, yeah, the that's little cool. bombs coming out the front. Like he's in the act of mid, mid, mid fire. Mid fire. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> three, seven. That's kind of sweet. Eight, three, nine. Okay. All right. Let's do, so that's, yeah, okay, there we go, bombs, 
Bombs coming out the front. Here's another toe piece. <laughs> this is actually um, a little tactical rock. Yeah, he's got a tactical rock with half a toe in it. Yep. Well, ha yeah, half of all of his toes. Pretty, pretty annoying. You know, the one thing I will say, though, I don't know if you've noticed, is that there actually kind of weirdly are less mold lines on more modern kits. The, the mold lines seem to occur in places... Yeah. Where it doesn't matter? They or? they intelligently designed this this kits, yeah. So that the I think that I think that was intentional. So that the the places where the sprue attaches to the the bits mm -hmm. are where you're gonna glue over anyway. Yeah. Which is awesome. That's really smart. Yeah. It it uh I am kind of curious about why they switched their mold line remover to being um oh. having this kind of vinyl this is cheaper i i guess so probably right yeah that would be my guess the plastic candles cheaper than whatever than the metal handle the metal or resin yeah or maybe it's yeah maybe they like the it's got that soft touch feel i was gonna say it doesn't like you don't have the sense handling this that is cheap though like right that was my concern when i saw the packaging after i had to um, buy a new one to replace the one that was stolen mm -hmm. i was like okay i'm gonna buy a new one and then i saw it and i was like oh man they changed it it's like i was like oh it's plastic now uh, but i was like well, whatever i'm gonna order it and uh, because i saw people still talking about it positively yeah um but yeah it's like a nice vinyl kind of a it's not like it doesn't feel like crappy cheap plastic yeah so I'm, I'm i am a fan um what was your like defining did you have a defining moment when you were like when you realized the amazingness that is the gw mold the mold, line well so um i was you one of the things i actually use a lot to remove um the like flash and um, not so much mold lines, but just like, I guess, yeah, flash, especially what they call it, right? Like the little pieces that are left yeah. there um, is a Dremel. I have oh, this thing called right. a Dremel stylo, which is right. like a small Dremel. Small Dremel, yeah. Instead of like holding a, because Dremel is kind of a big bulky thing. Right. So it's like a little one. It plugs right in here, um, for example, or wherever I'm working. And it's like, it's like just right. a little tiny thing. Um, I like to use that. And I still use that a lot for terrain. Um, so I didn't need it. And then a few people in fault line were like ranting and raving about it. And I was like, yeah, there are some situations where the Dremel is a little overkill or so then I use like you're doing, I use this thing. Right. But I actually don't like re real mold lines. I actually don't like using this thing for mold lines. Mm -hmm. I, I like using it to cut off pieces. Yeah. Um, which technically the Dremel plus this, you should not ever really need that I right think. but you still kind of do something and you the, what attachment do you use for the dremel it's like a little it's like a bur grinder it's sand? a little oh, no sander. it's sand it's a sander it's an abrasive drum or something yeah it's like not very super high grit right it's, it's probably pretty fine. medium grit medium low medium fine grit i yeah. would say and is it like a paper sand or is it like metal no it's like a little cardboard paper, paper thing that paper goes drum. on top goes on there and Got like it. one of them lasts forever yeah. Yeah. Unlike metal knife blades, which just dull in a second. Somehow, yeah. <clears throat> so I've yeah, I have been a pretty big fan of the Dremel. Um when I'm doing terrain, I'll use the I'll use that especially. Yeah, terrain can can have a lot. The 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 mold line sitch on terrain can be a lot worse. Well, yes, also my understanding is that much of the terrain is is different. Yeah. Um plastic like harder mm -hmm. manufactured elsewhere not in the uk but typically in china and um i think i mean that's how i broke my god hands was you broke them i broke i yeah, didn't know they broke yeah, yeah i broke I, i've broken two pairs of god hands oh my gosh um and and then apparently they have a uh lifetime warranty did you send it back no i threw them both away oh, okay yeah i i when i was looking for a pair of single bladed nippers mm -hmm. i did a bit of research and and all of like that is all over the internet all people can like the internet is 50 50 split between god hands are amazing i love them can't live without them they're just the best nippers in the world mm -hmm. and they break other people who say all of that but they break if you look at them funny yep they're like super sharp, super yeah. make it, super clean cuts. It was, is annoying. Is annoying. And they're like, and they're yeah. seventy dollars. Yeah. 
It's annoying. Um, and the yeah, there's there's some annoying things with them that people are. Um, yeah, here you can clip this one. Gunpla people are like can be brats for lack of a better word. I've noticed. Oh yeah, and um, they have like typically if you see people saying about breaking them. There's some gunpla person. First of all, it's Gundam. It doesn't need its own word. Nothing else gets its own word. It's Gundam. We don't call it... Anyway, Gundam people Gundam are people. brats about their kits, which are called Gundam kits. And um, typically what you see is somebody will like jump to the fence of God Hands and let you know that that's because you used it on some inferior... Right. You're uh, doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. You used Operator it on, on inferior plastic. Right. Only use it on official... Uh, Gunpla uh, plastic kits, by which, of course, multiple companies make, so that you can, you know, uh, assemble your thing and sit it somewhere on your desk at your loser job, and that that's, Whoa. that's you for life. Whoa. Yeah, I know. All right. <laughs> I, 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 Brett doesn't... Uh, Megan, Megan always tries to shut my hot, my sensor and my hot takes, but Brett just lets me, lets me go. Um, um, so I, the, where I ended up was I got a... I did get a pair of single bladed nippers, but they're not God Hands. What are they actually? I, I should. They're USA Gundam Store. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, but uh, it's their like house brand <laughs> okay. of, of, of single bladed nippers, and they're they're dulling a little bit, um, but they've not broken. Okay. And they're fine. They're fine. They're fine. I figured. I figured that like, it, sort of like you, I was like. Gundam people are super into their their hobby and their tools, and mm-hmm. they're kind of like elitist jerks about it. So like they must like know the best. They, right? don't, they don't. So I just assumed that that like they knew what they were talking about. And uh, if a a web shop was called USA Gundam Store, then it must sell only the highest quality Gundam tools from the USA. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure it does, but also like, <laughs> who cares? Um, yeah, it was it was cheaper. It was forty five dollars instead of seventy, and um, that was that kind of like I, that was like what I was willing to pay for a pair of of cutters, you know. So I, I guess I might get a pair of God Hands again, um, and knowing that if I just be careful with them, they won't break, and then when they do break, I'll just be I won't have them for three weeks while I send this back and yeah and they replace them like i guess um but i don't know the the other thing is like so i got this pair that actually uh in our discord roshan uh yeah. okay recommended from called nipex and oh yeah they're really a they're a wire cutter right right yeah. and this is how i started with a pair of wire cutters yes. and i still have that pair of wire cutters all my other cutters yeah this design right here that you have i hate right the single blade. The, yeah. No, no, no. I like the single blade. The the spring. Oh, the spring. Oh, the spring I okay. often. Um, I, I've had all my AK ones. Like it comes out. Oh, weird. Yeah, the spring comes out. The spring um, just pops out. The only ones that have lived are my old wire ones that I bought in two thousand eight. Weird. And these now these Nipek ones are kicking butt, and they have like this different. Um, they don't have the wire. They've they got have a spring. The the wire metal. thing. Yeah. yeah, there's like a coil there. So I um I don't know I haven't been I I I've been fine with these um yeah I, don't I know. feel like um your choice of uh, a person's choice of of nipping tools mm-hmm. says a lot about them I feel like it's a very personal choice oh yeah um that each of us have had our own journey. Um, experimenting with different nipping products. See, I just did a cut right here that I don't know that I would have trusted God Hands to make. It's pretty... <clears throat> it's pretty bulky. Pretty bulky. Lots of, yeah. lots of material. It, n- nothing else on this kit has been like that, though. And that's kind of the problem with God Hands, is you would sit here using them, yeah. and then you'd get to that, and they'd just break. And you'd be yeah. like, oh, right. And that's literally what happened to me both times. I was like, it's not like I like, took them, went into a kit that I shouldn't have, Cut and they broke. Yeah. In both cases, I was like working. It was both cases. It was terrain. It was Citadel terrain, clipping fine, and then just broke. I was like, oh, cool. The second time they like crumbled, 
the whole part just, oh my just, gosh. just crumbled. What? Like one clip, and then I pulled it, then like when I released, they all just like crumbled off. And I was like, whoop, so never weird. seen that before. Never seen a Citadel model destroy metal. Right. <laughs> right. Like what, what even is that? Like what's going on there? Yeah, well. Makes no sense. Some, so thankfully, I'm sure they don't watch <clears> Can I try your Nipex? Yeah, try it out. You can yeah. use these ones. I break them immediately. Don't worry about breaking I break them. them. <laughs> I, I've had them for like three years, so like they're very overdue to break. <clears throat> well, yeah, maybe, I don't know. I guess maybe it's me, but. Also, I don't think, yeah, I don't think you'll break them. But maybe right. I should. I, I do like the single, the single blade system. I mean, these are. For wire cutters, these are nice wire cutters. Yeah. I'm trying to look. Yeah, okay. Um, so, I don't know. I might get, I, I might get, like I said, I might get God Hands again. Hey, we have a critique. Oh, yeah. And we actually know this guy. Um, like, no, know this guy. Like, we've met this guy. This guy's been to this this very apartment before, actually. For, for. Um, he has, that's right. Yeah. So um, we decided that we would critique, uh, chat about uh, what our dear friend Digital Designer is working on. So uh, if you're unfamiliar or new to the show, mm -hmm. um, in our Discord we have a channel called Hobby Critiques where uh, channel members and Discord members will post photographs of, of things they're working on, specifically with, with uh, requests for, for specific bits of help. Um, and then we choose one of those a week to showcase on the Wednesday hobby stream. Yep. Um, and we talk about it on the air. Um, so digital designers working on uh, Tyranid Army. Uh, these are his gene stealers that he's painstakingly sculpted tentacle faces onto. Mm -hmm. They look disgusting. I, yeah, I love it. I, I didn't realize that these are green stuff these sculpted. These are green stuff sculpted, yeah. Um, you brought this up, and I was like, oh, no, isn't that just their head? Because this is a from an old Gene Stealer kit, anyway. This was a head. These are, And at one point, they had their own special rules. They're called Yum Garo Gene Stealers, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And they had these tentacle faces. So I, his green stuff work is amazing. I didn't know that. I thought that this was just the model, um, honestly. Yeah, so, he is, he's doing some really <laughs> intense green stuff work, yeah. which is super cool. So, um, but he's doing a, another thing with these models, which is he is planning to include these like uh, tufts and like flocking material on their backs as like sort of fluffy growths, I believe. Yes. Some sort of like fungal growths or, or uh, yeah, some sort of plant based life form on that, that they're symbiotically growing with, I guess. Okay. Um, and so he's including it's it's kind of it reads to me like an excuse to add a extra bit of texture, a different texture and a different color to what is potentially a very monochrome kit. Like he, yeah. you know, Gene Steel is just all flesh. I guess there's some chitin and some claws and stuff, but but it has the potential to be a very monochrome kit. And so this this idea of like adding some flock to its back. Um, is a is a cool way to add some. Now, has he started? Have I missed him doing this with anything yet? He has like mocked it up, uh, okay. and and as like a hey, here's like generally kind of what I'm imagining, but it's, yeah. he hasn't done it sort of finally because he he did it all I think with like like gray plastic and stuff. Okay. Um, but yeah, I um I'll say I'm gonna be curious how it turns out. Ideas like that can 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 go well and sometimes you do them and you're like, oh, you know what this doesn't look as good as i thought it would yeah so i'm curious to see how it goes for him um i mean he's a good painter he's I'm, he's a good modeler he's painted several armies so um i'm glad he's trying something new and i wish him luck and Definitely. i'm very curious to see how it comes out yeah so, <laughs> and yeah 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 so he's specifically asking for i believe um color choice feedback mm -hmm. on the fleshy bits that are sort of in the joints, yeah, and the claws. Um, what are your thoughts, Zach? So he got, he did get some already. Uh, for me, um, for yeah, De Devin gave him some feedback. I uh, somebody else, can't I can't remember who else. Um, 
he, he's gotten some good feedback on this. Uh, for me, I would probably the I think the guy in the back has green. Uh, for his fleshy. Oh yeah, he has he has two he's, he's he has two test models here, like one with with yellow joints and one with green joints. I would not introduce yellow into this model. There's enough colors going on. Um, there's the brown kind of carapace part and the, yeah. and the claws. I'd keep those brown. And then there's like this teal, green, orange vibe going on. Mm -hmm. The only way I'd introduce yellow into this model is if it was a highlight on the orange. I would not introduce yellow into like its own new, here's, here's a whole, here's a yellow thing. Right. Right. So I would make those green if those are the two options. And I, I think that green is the right option. Um... What about the claws? My my thought for the claws was actually like a black gray. Again, I wouldn't introduce a new color. I I'd keep it the same. You consider it black a new color? Yeah, yeah, I, okay. yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. So if you wanted to do the the carapace on the back, black gray. Oh, I see. Instead of the brown that he has, but I like the brown, and he he has more pictures of this. I would not introduce any new colors of this thing. He's got the red eyes. He's got the teal. He's got the green, the orange, yeah. the browns. Yeah. And the browns in the back, you can see he's done like the carapace feathering. He's done a yeah. really nice job on it. So all these colors are all to also like developed multifaceted. They're not just mm -hmm. flat colors. Right. So I don't want any more colors on this thing. Plus, he's going to have to do a base. Plus, he's got the tufts coming in. There's right. too many colors going on. I would, I would say green joints and keep the... I, I, the guy on the right. I think he got it. The guy yeah. on the right is the guy. Yeah. Personally I, I, for me. I know um, digital designers Votan is also, uh, are also very bright. He uh, he likes uh, bright colored armies, I think. I do too. Um, yeah, I know, right. Um, but I think the risk with, with when you like bright colored armies is that you end up with sort of, I don't know if busy is the right word, but... Just a lot going on with different different bright colors. The danger is adding too many colors. Too many bright colors. Yeah. Yeah. So, I agree. I would I would tend towards choosing a color that's already there. Um, and yeah, I know you've got. I kind of like the, like the green, yellow, brown. The orange almost feels too much to me. But I guess the orange is like the, the, I'm looking at the tentacles here. The orange, orange is sort of a just a more saturated version of the brown. Brown and orange are kind of the same color. The orange is also like the the complementary color of the, the accent color, the turquoise. The, the turquoise too. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Um, but yeah, I agree. I I would not like if if the option was to like add a whole. I I guess I my, where I differ is I feel like adding black does not Doesn't sort do of yeah, and overly I, clutter the model. I think you're probably r more right than, say, adding more yellow or right, red right. or something. Um, one of the things that we um, that I would encourage a uh, digital designer to, to think about is look at some... Um, this is actually why, we, why they're called lab yeah, mandrels, because we talked a lot about mandrels early on in one of our streams, yeah. because we kind of talked about how like nature actually does a lot of weird things with colors. Um, on animals, and you can see it rarely on mammals. The most colorful mammal is a mandrill. So you can look, see it on a mandrill, just the different colors all going on in a mm. mandrill. But look at something like a um, like a toucan or like a, I'm not going to say a jungle bird because part of what makes jungle birds so beautiful is that their colors actually do seem to be almost like really well laid out and thought out. Mm. But a lot of birds, the colors are freaking wild. And yeah, birds like, are insane. These colors don't make sense together. Um, like, why is that there and this there? And, like, yeah, just just, just weird. So, like, like um, I'm tr I mean, even a lot of times shorebirds will just have we a fat waterfowl and shorebirds will just have, like, a weird combination. Look at a blue heron. Or, no, sorry, a green heron. Uh, blue herons too, kind of, but look at look at a green heron. Like a green heron is just a wild combination of colors. Um, look at I'm trying to think of some other birds that are just bizarre combinations uh, or interesting combinations of colors. Um, <clears throat> if you ever played the game Wingspan, the bird on the box art is called Scissor Tail. That thing has just a weird combination of colors. Um, and maybe you go from there, but but I think even still you'll find that like. You want to be careful. Like, there's not a lot of like little. Uh, there's not a lot of like little places 
where there's just a that's not really true though i, I was gonna say there's not a lot of little places where there's just like a whole new color like why oh, because yeah. that is that does happen all the that time. does happen yeah then. so um i like these colors uh digital designer but i think i like um the green the green better i think i i just be careful how many colors you have a going little more on. cohesive i like the color all the colors i like the brightness yeah but uh, li- limit yourself on the different colors. I was also going to suggest um, we, Devin, so one of the perks of being a Mandel, which I believe Digital Designer is, uh, is these hobby classes that Devin puts on. And one of our past ones was about color selection. And I believe these, are these up on YouTube? The past hobby classes? Um the color section one is. Okay. I still actually need to do the non-metal metallic ones. Megan has asked me to do it, and I, I forget okay. every day. I need to put it up. But they will be up on YouTube. So go check yeah. out uh, Digital. Go check out the uh, the member section on YouTube uh, and and maybe have a gander at the class that Devin did on color selection. Um, that was one that I missed uh, also. I didn't get a chance to, to log in for that. But um, it's something that I struggle with a lot. Um, and, and I'm expecting that I'll get a lot of value from when I have a chance to go back and watch it. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, but he, uh, he's bringing this army to Maelstrom Mixer. So he's yes. got just under a month to, to finish Which it Which will out. be fun. It'll be actually really fun to see this live. Yeah, this will be cool to see in person. Um, Brett, you know what's very funny? What's funny? Is um, using your, your single... Blade ones, yeah. so much nicer than these. It is. Yeah. They just went through so much better. So I, I need to get. I think I might try to get that same pair you have. If you say USA Gundam Store, USA Gundam Store. Yeah. Wouldn't funny. it be funny if I tried to buy them and they wouldn't sell them to me because of the stuff I said about about Gunpla? Yeah, they're like, I. That's fine. Yeah. You can even have them for free. Right. I just need you to go on stream and say you were wrong and that we do deserve <laughs> our own special name for a special hobby. Called Gunpla. Gunpla. You can't say I'm doing I'm doing a Gundam kit. No, they. You have to say I'm doing Gunpla. No, they. It's called the Gundam store. It's not the Gunpla store. So they even acknowledge. They acknowledge that, that it's pretentious yeah. to get your own. Yeah, we should make up a name for like, um, not I'm hobbying. Oh. But like uh, some kind of name for um, Warhammer what, hobbying. Yeah. What does it mean when you're specifically assembling Warhammer? Any any Citadel model, right? You get your it gets its own name. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, and people it. are like, "Oh, are you? Are, what are you? Oh, are you putting together forty k models?" And it's like, "No, I'm." And then you just say this stupid I'm, word. Yeah. It's actually called this. Help us out, Chad. Yeah, it's um, it's not hobbying. It's and and like Gundam and Gunpla. It's like sort of sounds the so same. Close. Yeah, it's like it's like. War building. Sitta Sitta something. Sitta build, build hammer. Sitta do. Sitta <laughs> Sitta works. Sitta, sitta gluing. Sitta 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 uh, Pla Play Doh. That's what I'm gonna call it. We can do better. Sitta Pla Sitta Sitta Pla. Sitta Pla. That's what we should do. It's Sitta Pla. Yeah, sit-a-pla. that's it. Sitta Pla. I'm doing anyway. my Sitta Pla. Sitta Pla is is the new. And, oh, it's so good because it just it just mocks them even more. Like, they oh, can, man. like, there's no, like, why are you calling it that? It's like, you know why I'm calling it that. Cinepla. Listen, as far as Cinepla goes for today, yeah. I sit um, <laughs> I sit <laughs> one full guy, <laughs> and then I sit the rider. The rider for another full But guy. not the other one. And I, I, I maybe oh, had the a few, mount. we're close yeah. to the end here. I maybe had enough time to sit up the, the rider. Yeah, but I, yeah. Um, I'm never going to be able to say that with a straight face. <laughs> I I stopped because I thought that when you look at the Cinepla instructions, yeah, it'll be better if you can just start on the rider fresh oh, rather sure. than like, hey, it's Brett, a good here's, stopping point. Here's a thing off the side. I did accidentally though. I don't know if you're collecting bits. I did clip I off half a cr- giant face. Okay, but it's the one you didn't use. Yeah, I guess there's an extra. Yes, there is an extra. Okay. Yeah, I didn't use this. This guy had a this guy. This one that I built had an open mouth or a closed mouth, and I I built him with his closed. I imagine he's like he's gr- <clears throat> he's he's yeah he's bracing himself to deal <clears throat> d three mortal wounds to whoever he's about to charge. Is that what he does? They yeah they uh, on the charge they deal you um, <clears throat> you roll a die for each model in your unit. And mm-hmm. on a four up, they deal D three mortal wounds. For each four up you roll, they do D three mortal wounds. 
That's pretty good. That is good. Some Sigma model just got that. Is that I think the Chariot just got that role for Stormcast or something oh, okay. that they that they showed today. Can I ask you in forty k um tenth and forty k are because you play third ed Sigmar and fourth ed and uh, tenth ed forty k yeah. So can I ask you are mortal wounds like you get like when you hear something in Sigmar does D three mortal wounds you're like uh, all right I guess you can waste right. my time with that. Um, <clears throat> are mortal wounds still scarier in forty k than they are in Sigmar? More rare. Um, and here's yeah. a follow-up question. Are they more rare, and then are they actually more scary? So there's a lot less bring a thing back in in, in healing. And I guess there's, I guess it depends what faction you are. In Tal, there's no healing. Um, <clears throat> and uh, unless you're playing Crute, there's no bringing things back. Um, but yeah, things in, in Warhammer tend to have better saves. Uh, and invulnerable saves exist. So like things that bypass these are like mortal wounds that get through an armor save and get through a oh no uh do you, did you use the one that I circled this one oh no I but I'm having a hard time getting this to stick so it's an easy fix <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so I think like mortal wounds just generally like there's more oh I paid a bunch of points to buy to bring a dude who's like really tough and and has a really good save. Like that, there's less of that. Like, like, like we talked this about this before, but in, in Sigmar, things are durable because they have... Like, what makes a thing durable is it just has more wounds, right? Like, that's yes. generally yeah. how durability is expressed. That's how toughness is... Yeah. Is, in, is, in, sorry. In durability instead of toughness is done through... <clears throat> yeah. Just quantity of wounds, yeah. So, so, uh, so in... It, 40k durability is very often i mean that's part of there's one way durability can be expressed but it is often additionally expressed by by having a good save and or an invuln and so you can wards you know, also less common wards also less feel no pains yeah let's go feel no pain and feel no pain does work against mortal wounds in 40k it does yeah so okay so it's almost as if um you know you had an ability that was like in, in AOS, it's almost like it is if you had an ability that was like, hey, this ability does D3 mortal wounds. But if you're doing it to a unit that has a combined wounds characteristic of 20 or more, then it does like D6 mortal wounds or 2 D3 mortal wounds or something like that. Like if it got sort of more deadly, the more durable your thing was. Got it. Got the target it. was. Which actually does happen. That, yeah, there's there's, there's an element of that that exists. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay, fascinating. <clears throat> but they are still kind of scary. Yeah, yeah. All right, let me hook this, guys. I'm putting a... Um, oh, shoot. I forgot to trim. I was using your uh, clippers for my guy. For your Citipla, yeah. For my Citipla. <laughs> and I forgot to... Uh, um, it wasn't... It doesn't do as close of a cut, right? So you have to... They're not official Citipla. They're not officially yeah, they're, Citipla. They're, they're garbage clippers because they're not designed for But it just means you have to go back and and um, and trim everything, which I forgot to do. Do you plastic glue to the base? Yeah. Do you not? No. How do you attach to the base? You know, I have this system where I do um Oh, because you spray paint it and then and then do it I do bases it. totally separate. Yeah. Yeah. I use crap Bob Smith Industries glue. Right. Tiny, tiny amount, and then I also do um, <clears throat> super tiny amount, and then I do the accelerator, which apparently weakens it. Does it? it? Makes well, I don't know. People say it does. People say it makes it more brittle. Oh, okay. Um, and so then, um, it just snaps off typically. So that's your you intentionally make it more brittle so that you can snap it off, huh? Yeah. So I paint them with one base, and then I... That's why, like, I gave you a base the other day, and it right. was, like, spray paint. Covered in yeah. paint. Because yeah. that, that had previously served as a paint bait. Paint yeah, I like help. It. Yeah, that makes sense. Should I... Um, <clears throat> the guy who is the mount's done, but not the model, should I... Do you want me to plastic him to the base, or maybe you want to... Yeah, um, yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, okay. And that way we can show off kind of where we got. I'm, uh, I'm just about to wrap this guy up. He's got a satchel. He's got a shoulder bag, um, which I'm kind of into. Uh, I don't mind that so much. 
So I have a question about we're we're just about out of time here. Um, I have a question about Citiplaw. Oh yeah. Um, it refers to only the building of the models, right? Because gun does gun what does gunpla actually refer to? I looked it up. There's no definition of it anywhere it is a, online because it, it's, it's a not kit. a real word. It's a kit. So it's like the kit. it's a reference to the kit. So these are like the gunpla is if you say I built a gunpla, it's like a noun. What, what if you says I built? Uh, if you say I built a Gundam kit, then you said the same thing. Correct. Just not pretentiously. Yeah. So these are Cita Citapla. Yeah, we it's are building. Noun. It's a noun. Yeah. We're oh, okay. we're we're assembling Citapla. Citapla. We're we're building Citapla. But there should also be a word for the, the act verb. of building. Right. Well, right. yeah. Okay. We then listen. We're we're leveling like, we, up the pretentiousness here. Yeah. Um. So I guess we should just say Citapla. Um, <laughs> use it as a verb. Citapla building. Can we just use it all? Can we just use the same word as a verb? <clears throat> if if there's one way to get the word more widespread usage, is use it in every context just imaginable. Use it. Yeah. <laughs> see blueberry. I mean, boy. look at the see blueberry be, boy. See the original <laughs> the f word. It gets used for everything. There's like a whole skit <laughs> about that, right? <laughs> all right. So I need to mark. Where I completed up to, I completed up to number, through number 13, I'm going into number 14. Um, wow. Yeah. Hey, Brett, we did it. Yeah, do you want to uh, switch over to Cam Little here? Lumix, she, see our progress on the, on the, so on we the built, set of plus. We built some dudes. Oh, it's cool to see a crew with a grenade launcher like that, though. Uh, and you built some dudes. Mm -hmm. Well, one of those. Oh, I see. You have built the other one already. So then there's uh, the... What are we doing wrong? Here we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this guy, the guy I built, is. I love his pose with the axe. He is about to lob this off guy, a head. Yeah, yeah, he is about to just like play golf. He is teeing up. He's teeing up to take a head off. Have you ever... We talked about this the other day. Have you ever... He's playing polo, basically. Polo, yeah. He's playing polo with an axe. Axe polo. Yeah. Cool. All right. So we got some uh, some crude dudes built. Very fun. Um, they'll join these characters at some point. You know, look <clears> at <throat> you buying a new kit and adding them to your army right away. And <laughs> they've got a little little doggo. A little dog. <laughs> awesome. This was fun, Zach. What about adding the little dog to one of the berserkers? <laughs> he's just like, he's like riding on the shoulder. He's like, oh my gosh, if he's like up here, he's just like, da -da -da -da. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here we go. Just, he's so calm too, compared to the uh, uh, what are they called? The um, raging rampagers. Rampagers. Yeah. He's so calm compared to the rampagers. He's just, <laughs> he's just watching what's about yep, to happen. Just surfing. <laughs> Uh, all That's right, great. hey, a big thanks as always to our yeah, Mandrills. Thanks everyone for joining us. Yeah. Thanks, Mandrills, for supporting the channel. Yeah. Um, coming up this week, uh, we have a AOS game on Saturday. Me and Steven, Bone Reapers, making their debut on the channel. Um, Steven is super lethal with them, but we're going to put them up against the um, Quicksilver Dead and Night Home and see how they do against a four super durable, save. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Do I they think have mortals? They uh they they have a six of ward which they will not get against my me. Oh no, I was gonna say do, do they uh, do more? The, yeah, do the bone reapers? No, do actually, morals. not a ton, not <clears throat> a okay. ton, okay. not a ton. Yeah, um, per our previous conversation. Yeah. So thank you everybody. As we like to say, uh, be kind to each other, be kind to yourselves, and always be creating. Bye bye. Peace. bye.